the one that I do. Thank you, thank you. And thank you. Thank you for the fucking PP. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, chat. I had a pre-stream popsicle. I had a fudge bar. They're delicious. They're delicious. I took a bit of a hiatus off of eating fudge bars for a long time because one time I ate a fudge bar and it was from the dollar store and it was really gross. It was too sugary. And, um... So I went to go wash my mouth out. And the water was too warm and it shocked my... It shocked one of my teeth. One of my nerves. And it was... It was the worst pain imaginable. What's in the soup thing? I'm big, big, big. Then he's breakfasting in doors. Hi, Reddit Rabbit. Mr. Corn Facing, I'm big, big, big. Poop. Oh, yeah, it was... It was painful. It was... It was painful. Yeah, so... Cactus. You... You ask. Well, this is the... This is the first submission. And they didn't put a name down. This was the first person to submit a response, and they didn't put anything for it. They just sent a link to the Wikipedia page for cacti. Now, I'm not sure how much of this we're actually gonna read. <laughs> I, 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 I... I don't know how much of this. This is probably pretty long. Probably very long. <clears throat> but I will... I will at least read some of it. All of it, no. Drink the cactus juice. Now he says, thank you, thank you. I remember the straw this time. Also, my, my stream snacks. Keep my energy up. I have cookies. I have chewy chips ahoy. Anybody who prefers regular chips ahoy, you're stupid and I hate you when you're wrong. I'm gonna make a poll. What kind of chips ahoy do you prefer? Classic? Or chewy. Dangerously based. Thank you. Thank you. I believe in chewy cookie supremacy. I really do. I really do. When I run for president, that's that's what that's the platform I'm gonna run on. The Reese one? Oh, those are good. What about chunky? Those are stupid. Those are stupid. Chewy are way too sweet. They're all too sweet. They're the most sugar-filled cookie out there, aside from literal sugar cookies. Fluffy necklace thing from those. When I was in Mexico, I saw giant cacti that looked like trees. Oh? I prefer not eating soy. Is there soy in, in Chips Ahoy? I have no idea. They don't sell them in the UK, so I can't answer. You're stupid. You should you should move to America. Yeah, your mom is sweet. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, you need tennis for breakfast thing with the five dollars. Hi, Reddit Rabbit. So the witch doctor thing for dollars. Nice hits. What you drinking tonight? Coca Cola. Just normal Coke. Just normal Coca Cola. My mom is sweet. Thank you. They're soy and everything these days. Mmm. Parkinson come big baby. Chewy Chad's own oh, classic cells. Yeah. All right. I bake my cookies so they're still nice and chewy. Ten plus after hours after they're done baking and cooling. How the hell do you do that, Dylan? How the hell? Alright. Cactus. Do I read this? Probably not, right? A cactus. Cacti, cactuses, or less commonly, cactus, of the pluralized form, is a member of the plant family. Cactaceae, a family comprising about 127 genera, with some 17... Well, 1750. 1750 known species of the order... Karyophyllalis, that's probably an Arknight's character. The word cactus derives through Latin from the ancient Greek word cactos, a name originally used by Theophrastus for a, for a spiny plant whose identity is now not certain. Cacti occur, 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 fuck, occur in a wide range of shapes and sizes. They are native to the Americas, ranging from Patagonia in the south to parts of western Canada in the north, with the exception of Ripsalis bassifera, which is also found in Africa and Sri Lanka. Cacti are adapted to live in very dry environments, including the Atacama Desert, one of the driest places on Earth. Because of this, cacti show many adaptations to conserve water. For example, almost all cacti are succulents, meaning they have thickened, fleshy parts adapted to store water. Unlike many other succulents, the stem is the only part of most cacti where this vital process takes place. 
Most species of cacti have lost true leaves, retaining only spines, which are highly modified leaves. As well as defending against herbivores, spines help prevent water loss by reducing airflow close to the cactus and providing some shade in the absence of true leaves. A learning chat. <laughs> In, uh, in the absence of true leaves, cacti and large stems carry out photosynthesis. You don't understand any of this? Well, you're stupid. There's a way to change Wikipedia to, like, layman's Wikipedia. I don't know how you do that. We're just gonna do that one paragraph. We're moving on to the next one now. Thank you! Thank you for the submission! Yeah, stupid mode. Be me, bottomless pit supervisor. In charge of making sure the bottomless pit is, in fact, bottomless. Occasionally, have to go down there and check if the bottomless pit is still bottomless. One day, I go down there and the bottomless pit is no longer bottomless. The bottom of the bottomless pit is now just a regular pit. Distress.jpg Ask my boss what to do. He says, just make it bottomless again. I say, how? He says, I don't know. You're the supervisor. Rage.jpg Quit my job. Become a regular pit supervisor. First day on the job. Go to the new hole. It's bottomless. This is classic. This is classic. There's no, there's no name on this one either. Yeah, how relatable? So relatable. Uh, Snowkin sent in um just a drawing. I can't read this. It's very pretty, but I can't read it. So the next one... <laughs> Crop, sorry. The next one is from Dagger Race. Take a little sip. I should have got water for this, but I'm, I'm Giga Brain and I got soda. Even though you're not supposed to... If I regret mine, can I send you a different one? Uh, I can make it so you guys can edit. Allow response. There you go. If you submitted something, now you can edit your response. <clears throat> I'm out before Pippa reads classified intel reports. Nectar then come BBB, Gangnam Style. Ace Combat Lore by Deleted. Anyways, today I will be discussing Ace Combat Lore. So, several million years before the dawn of man, this is technically where the lore starts, so the Ulysses asteroid, which is real, does a funny dance and leaves the orbit of Jupiter. Some smart person with a telescope looks at it and goes, Yeah, that'll fuck up our shit. So as a sane and normal response, the Aussian Federation, the US, but Japan, decides to build Stonehenge. A 12-piece, rotating, multi-targeting, anti-asteroid, railgun artillery emplacement in the middle of the desert. It's supposed to be able to cover the entirety of the expected Ulysses impact zone. About a year after the discovery of Stonehenge, a country called Belka stops. Belka was basically Germany. Their economy went to shit, lost a bunch of money, sold territory, trying to survive. Some territories vie for independence. One, Eustio, is supported by Eosia, who is the US. After becoming independent, Eustia finds a shit ton of resources. Ace Combat is Japanese, so the Japanese perception of Erika. All the cool freedom shit, none of the bad. So, Belka, a country renowned for their air force, says fuck it. They proceed to invade anyone they can. This includes Eustio. This is where the events of AC take place. Eustio hires Galm Team, two mercenary pilots. Galm 1, Cypher, and Galm 2, Pixie. There are 16 ace combats. 7 mainline. 8, actually. 5 is my fave. 7 is great, though. Anyway, so Galm 1 and, and 2 proceed to wreck shit. Eustio goes from being almost completely overrun to fine in like two months. Then the allied states, Eustio and Ozia and everyone but Belka, push into Belka. Then Belka decides to do a power move. They whip out their gigantic fucking laser. Because they have an anti-ICBM laser! Built during the Osea Yuktobanian Cold War. This is 1955. 19, 1995, sorry. <laughs> it's called Excalibur and it's bigger than most buildings. Of course, this is after busting like 18 mega structures. Anyway, so Galm team attacks and destroys Stonehenge. Then they go to this nice little town called Hofnung. No wait, shit, Excalibur, not Stonehenge. Hofnung is a little industrial city, so Galm team gets sent to escort some precision bombers. Except, psych, they aren't precise. And they don't mean to, so the city gets whacked. The Belkans go, oh shit, and as a perfectly normal response, they burn the rest of it down without evacuating civilians. 
So now one, Pixie, gets the sad. So, Pixie, your wingman is lagging behind you as you get sent to another mission. He's sad. Out of nowhere! Falcon bombers headed for Usio, armed with WMDs, are spotted. You get sent to Intercept. Cypher shoots down all the bombers because... And then, Belka calls everyone a bitch and shoots themselves in the liver. By, nu by nuking seven of their own unoccupied cities to create a border! Northern Belka is basically Switzerland, with a nuke border. So in confusion, Pixie goes, fuck this, and tries to shoot down Cypher before fleeing. Belka just kind of disintegrates after nuking themselves. They get their shit rocked. But not before they use a giant plane! The XB-0! Imagine if someone tied a U.S. military base together, wrapped it in armor, and slapped wings on the bitch! That! It's being defended by Espada Squadron, who are from Spain. Shitty Spain. Oh, Zapping. Shitty Spain. But Sapin's fighting Belka. So it turns out that due to the war, there's now this massive terrorist organization that's full of fed up soldiers from everywhere and like the entire Belkan military. Anyway, so they're gonna nuke the whole world with this super merv because Posadism. They hate borders and want the rest of the, oh, want to reset the world. <laughs> because Posadism. They hate borders and want want to reset the world. So Cypher goes to destroy the launch facility. Which is a dam for some reason. And they do. But psych! P Pixie's here and he wants to kill you! He's got this dope new plane called the Morgan. Shit's got lasers, pocket nukes, and ECM system so powerful that it can jam bullets. Stop saying ESL chat! I'm not ESL! So Pixie launches the big fuck and Cypher has to go shoot him down from the front because the jet intakes are the only weakness. And Pixie gets his shit rocked and the nuke gets fucked. Detonates mid-air and somehow is fine. Anyway, so in 1997, they realize the Ulysses asteroid is hollow. Turns out its range is doubled. Yuktobania, USSR, decides to also build a big-ass railgun, the Chandelier. Because Stonehenge now can't protect everyone. The country of Yersia, kinda modern Russia, built a shit ton of bunkers. Yeah, impact is doubled. That's game one of like five. Oh shit, I forgot the civilian murder. Anyway. So the estimated impact now covers the continent of Osea. Eurasia tries to build the Megalith, an anti-asteroid ICBM launch silo, but it's not finished in time. So in 1999, the Ulysses asteroid enters Earth's atmosphere and begins to break apart. How fucking long is this?! This bad is it regardless when are we getting an ace combat game about the Pakistan? Pixie Misa and Dollars. It's true, I did that? Holy fuck, that was all just the first game, I guess so. <laughs> I'm finding this interesting. Well, that's good. That's good. Look at your scroll bar. Oh my god. But some of this has to be comments, right? It has to be Reddit comments, right? Oh my god. Loads of chunks fall to the earth. The ones that would land in empty areas are ignored, while Stonehenge attempts to shoot down every asteroid heading for a populated area. Bad news. A sizable chunk is headed towards Farbanti, the capital of Eurasia. Stonehenge Gun 7 goes to shoot it down. 40 seconds before firing, Turret 7 is knocked offline by an asteroid. The chunk slams into one of the most populated parts of Harbanti. The crater creates the Sunken District. Oh yeah, and Osea was fine. Cause Eurasia and Stonehenge are on the continent of Yusi. But Osea finds itself Vibin, also Osea. B so basically, Eurasia decides, fuck it, and goes to war with the ISAF, Independent State Allied Forces. So, as first strike, in 2003, Eurasi takes Stonehenge in a surprise attack. Some Eurasian genius goes, Hey guys, you know this one kilometer long anti-asteroid railgun that shoots at like Mach, 5, Mach 7? What if we pointed it at planes? What are these words? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, ISP is dying. And sip break. Come on, ISP. Teal deer? I don't think there is a teal deer. Yeah, the internet can barely handle this insanity. Oh my god. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scoot a little bit closer to my screen. So, ah! Oh, it's okay. It's just my phone. Ah. We in 360p? Yeah, welcome to welcome to the Pippa zone. That's just how stream the... Maybe some BGM? I have BGM going. It was just some crappy hip hop music, but I can find, um. 
No copyright intense music. Um. Intense music, no copyright. Let's go. Oh, I just downloaded it. What the fuck? Okay. Alright! Jesus, Raven, thank you for the hundred dollars! What better way to celebrate than a Peppa stream? Today's my birthday, Peppa. Can I get a happy birthday from my favorite pink rabbit? Please! Happy birthday, Raven! Happy, happy birthday! Oh? Um, that racing gum big pippy. Okay, where'd my chat box go now? There it is. Hold on. Let me refresh. Alright. Oh my god. This is long as hell. And so they do, basically gaining continental air superiority overnight. ISAF flips their shit. Eurasia I'm bad. So ISAF, GHQ, and any survivors from the entire continent regroup on North Point, which is Britain, but somehow worse. Anyway, ISAF are getting their shit rocked. So Eurasia decides to finish this and send over a wing of strategic bombers to wipe ISAF GHQ off the map. But they're intercepted by an ISAF pilot, Mobius-1. The only member of the 118th Tactical Fighter Wing. Anyway, Mobius-1 proceeds to wreck shit. ISAF then mounts a series of offensives to destroy Eurasian logistics. And then the Azir fleet... So there's a warship. Which is this big-ass fleet the Eurasians have. Also, so Mobius-1 destroys several small countries worth of infrastructure. And then they mount an offensive on the Azir fleet, which can't move because they blew up all the fuel. And then they wipe it off the map! Also, after this mission, there's a cutscene where the pilots sing the ISAF National Anthem for like 20 seconds. It has a voice actor you never heard here before or again. It's suspected to be Mobius One. Anyway, Mobius One keeps wrecking shit. No, just a pilot. Apparently a rookie, too. The only one to either A, survive Stonehenge out of a wing of other pilots, or B, be the only pilot sent to an entire wing. Yeah, Mobius One is player character. Anyway, Mobius One does some more pilot shit and eventually is sent to destroy Stonehenge, which works. And Mobius One is sent to single-handedly defeat, defend two defecting passenger planes who Eurasia is trying to shoot down. Basically, ISAF rocks Eurasia's shit. Oh, the music's even quieter than before. Is that better? Now maybe you guys can hear it. Silver Spire, I think I'm gonna be... Is this Ace Combat or Metal Gear? Ace Combat. Better? Um, oh god. Uh, after the Battle of Farpanti, Eurasia surrenders, but these cool and hip Eurasian Zoomer officers decide to be wacky! They decide to use the just-finished Megalith, so Mobius-1 is sent to destroy it! And the only way Ace Combat knows how, a tunnel run. Four, actually. So, from where I left off, Mobius-1 destroys Megalith, which has a Pog theme, and established peace forever. Anyways, five years later, there's another war! This time, it's between Yuktobania and Osea! Before the war, Yuktobania and Osea were working on the Arkbird Project, which is a space station, but it's a plane. Anyway, so Yuktobania SR-71 is spotted over Sand Island. The War Dog Squadron of Sand Island is sent to intercept. A Yuk Squadron is sent to intercept them! They fight, but both nations cover it up. War Dog Squadron is then sent to disable a Yuk spy boat. Oh yeah, War Dog are all rookies except for the captain because everyone else got ganked by unidentified aircraft. The Yukes defend the spy boat and shoot down the captain. Blaze, the player character, becomes the captain. Anyway, the Yukes just go to total war. Also, Edge, Nagase, the original series' original waifu, is technically the captain, but she's edgy and blames herself for the captain being shot down. Also, the captain isn't found when the rescue team gets sent out. Grim, a rookie rookie, joins War Dog as the fourth member. The members are Blaze, player character, Edge, Waifu, Chopper, Chad, and Grim, nerd. So War Dog gets sent out on patrol. On the patrol, they find the pr president of Olsia, President Harling's plane. It's turned off its transponder because it's on a stealth mission to Peace Conference, and some idiot shot at it. Anyway, the Yuke somehow know about it and go and intercept it, so War Dog defends it. There's a spy on board who kills the pilot, and the plane gets crash-landed by the president's secretary. War Dog defends it until the 84 92nd Squadron shows up to protect it. Harling says he's going to find a peaceful solution, so like three days later, Hosea invades U Yukdalbania in an extremely bloody landing operation. So yeah, also Osea 
strap the giant laser to the Arkbird. So now they have an orbital Death Star. Also, the Yuke started using the Sinfaxi, a super submarine, basically. Imagine a modern battleship, but submarine, basically. It has shitloads of missiles and was used to help an amphibious invasion that failed. Also, the Sinfaxi gets d zapped by the Arkbird when you're trying to stop the invasion and sinks in, like, Mission 5. Ace Combat has weird pacing. It killed a shitload of rookie pilots because it also has pocket nukes. Anyway, the president has disappeared, and War Dog gets sent out on high altitude transport interception mission. A local engineering college gets mysteriously bombed the shit out of by Ocean planes. War Dog hears 8492nd over the radio say they did it. But then, but when they brought on a court martial, they are told that the 8492nd didn't exist and they were the only squadron in the area! Wow. After that Ocean, quote unquote, terror attack, Yuktobania decides to stealthily invade Arid. Osea's capital airport, somehow. Also, they try to gas a college town, kind of based. Anyway, really bad ballistic missile at attack makes Osea realize there's a second Synfaxi sub! This one's called the uh, Hrimfaxi. Fucking tabaxi name, what the hell? And its boss fight song is literally just Synfaxi with a sick electric guitar over it! No, I am not joking. And also, here's a map of the Ace Combat world. Stranger Real map here. It's called Strange Real. Also, or anyways, War Dog is sent to go sink the Hrim Faxi. And overall, it's a very fun fight. <laughs> you should play this game. The Hrim Faxi is in the Razgiz Strait in Universe Mythological Demon. Due to their success. Bro, okay, I've played an Ace Combat game. I just remember flying around and shooting shit. Is there really this much lore? Is there? Is there? Is there really this much lore? <laughs> I don't remember there being any story! What the fuck? First is kids are gonna be free soup of Friday. It's not my birthday. It's Peppa's birthday. It's not my birthday. Yes? Oh my god. You haven't seen anything yet? Oh my god. What was the playing game you played right after debut? That was, um... Red Skies? Or something like that? Christian name. There's Miss Peppa. I'm lost in the space section. Where are we? Don't worry about it. Or, uh, what was it called? Red Wings? Something like that? It was a- it was a terrible game. You played as, um... Speak louder, I'm old. Turn your volume up! It was like a, um... Like a little arcade-style game where you play as the Red Baron. Uh... Due to their success, War Dog starts getting called Demons of Razgriz by the Ukes, and it sticks. When War Dog gets sent out on a mission to save prisoners of war, hoping that the captain is there, he's not. In Edge, Nagase gets shot down. War Dog then mounts a search and rescue operation. It works! Then they go do fun military air support jazz. War Dog is given the honor of doing the flyby for a speech by the president at Alred Stadium. Psych! It's the VIP, because no one can find the president, and the Ukes attack the capital! Somehow. Anyway, no one is evacuating the stadium that the Ukes are trying to bomb, and Chopper, best character, gets hit by a missile. He's going to eject, but he can't find a place to point the jet without hitting civilians because it's a city. He decides on the stadium to get people to evacuate it, but his eject ejection system got blasted to smithereens! He does the honorable sacrifice of flying the plane into the ground so no one else gets hurt. Fucking Chad move. Anyway, he dies, and it's actually really sad. The music basically, basically cuts out, the radio chatter goes away, and the only thing left to do is murder a shit ton of Ukes. Which they do. Afterward, they are sent in support of a stalled attack on a Uke fortress, which they help succeed. Why are you still reading this? Yep. <laughs> yeah, rest in peace, Chopper. They are hailed as heroes and are to be escorted back. Psych! The escort squadron is the 8492nd, who supposedly don't exist. Anyway, the 8492nd tried to shoot them down, to which War Dog responds by running away! When they get back to the base, they realize that the base's vice commander is a member of the 8482nd, which then gets War Dog their mechanic, Pops, also with Chad, the story narrator, Gene, the journalist, marked as traitors. War Dog then steals a bunch of unarmed training jets to escape after being pursued by the 8492nd and the once allied AWAX Thunderhead. War Dog does some sick aerobatics around this island that screw up screws up radar. Keeps going. <sighs> Keeps going. This is also when War Dog goes does a cool tunnel run and realizes that Pops the mechanic isn't just a Chad. He's a Belkin Chad! He fought with Belka in 1995 but deserted it after being ordered to Nuka City! This is actually part of the Ace Combat Zero missions. Anyways, they outrun the 8482nd for a little and then are met by swordsmen and Ocean F-14 Ace from earlier in the story. 
He, after using a signal light to tell them the bail, shoots down the planes, leaving the totally fine pilots as in the water, but everyone thinks they're dead. A search and rescue team is sent out. But it's Sea Goblin! The team is from the POW missions, and they're from the Kestrel, an aircraft carrier. And they owe War Dog big time, so they rescue them and report them dead. So basically, the captain of the Kestrel and the admiral of the fleet is a base the gamer. He intercepted a bunch of transmission and figured out that War Dog was innocent. And also, the 84, 80, 92nd, or Grabaker squadron were Belkin pilots that the Oceans picked up. But the 84, 92nd still want Belka to rise again. So they and a bunch of other Belkins basically started this war to destroy Osi and kill a shit ton of people. War Dog find Harling's location and Belka and rescue him. They're also renamed to Razgriz Squadron, or the Ghosts of Razgriz, since they're technically dead. So the Belkin Greymen are, are behind basically everything ever. They want to start a bunch of deadly forever wars because revenge and they're trying to nuke shit. Razgris stops this, but the Belkins already got three nukes. So an anti uke resistance cell got a hold of one of the nukes and are trying to disarm it. When Razgris moves into support, they are opposed by Ofnir Squadron, who are the uke Debanian version of the 8492nd. The Razgris succeed and shoot them down. For now. Also, the Belkins hijack the Arkbird and strap the nuke to it. So it's gonna bomb a city! So the Razgris shoot it down. Also, the captain from Mission 1 is still alive and he managed to rescue the Uke Prime Minister who also got disappeared. And you rescue them! And then there's this really neat sea battle. It's great. The war is basically over because both heads of state come out and say that the Belkins did it. But it kind of just ends the Circum-Pacific War. But Belkins! They both whack the Kestrel with a missile and sink it and also reactivate the Solji, which is a giant space rail gun they were building pre-1995, but they just kind of stopped, mostly from the Belka stopping existing thing. So the Great Men reactivate it. So there's a really good mission where the Ukes and the Oceans team up. Great fun. Also, there's AC4 fan service. Anyway, legally mandated tunnel run. But the Soul G's controls go boom, but the Belkins are doing more Belkin shit. They program the Soul G and its nukes to R right into R right, Ocean Capital, if it ever loses the communication. So it goes to do that. But the, and the Razgrids are sent to intercept. But Ofnir and the 8492nd are there to escort it to the ground. And you do a neat dogfight before the Soul G enters the range, and then you shoot it down as the best song in the game plays. Soul G explodes. Game ends really fucking good. The Razgrids gets reclassified and kind of stop existing, and peace gets permanently established. Anyway, then nine years later, Eurasia decides to take over Eusia. Oh yeah, and they're a kingdom now. And there's a space elevator and two giants flying drone craft air carriers called the Arsenal Birds. That's Ace Combat 7. So you play as Trigger and the psychopathic dog Ace, who's a rookie in the... I-U-N-P-K-F. U-N, basically. Eurasia bombs Sand Island again, and you basically just do war stuff until you kill the former president and get sent to a penal Air Force unit, which is just... really is confusing. Okay. Well, that's that. Thank you for the lore. Odwin and can be very mucho texto. Yeah. I, I I got about halfway, you know, I was like, well, I'm already halfway through it. I can't just stop now. Welcome to Dying in the Dollars. God damn, I love Ace Combat. Big clacks in your Dollars. Are we there yet? Right <laughs> before for Dollars, they say brevity is the soul of wits. <laughs> As you play there, thank you for the 249. My connection dropped. Can you restart this one? No. Unusual heights in Big B. Your English lessons are really paying off, Pippa. Fuck off. Typical panda thing, Dolores. War crimes have never been so much fun. Apocalypse for everything. For Dolores, Pippa Final Fantasy 14 or F XVI comes out in 13 days and there's no. Okay. Uh. <laughs> the best badness. Uh. Thank you for the. By Dolores. 4 is great. It has cutscenes done by Studio 4C. Sensor Duck, thank you for the 132. Pooh Chucker reporting in. Christian, thank you for the 214. P Miss Pippa, I'm lost in the space section. Where are we? Oh, I read that. More potatoes, thank you for Dolores. We're done. Well, well done on tricking our ESL streamer how to read. What? What? I missed it. Can you read? No. No, we're not doing that again. Okay, this next one. Holy fucking shit! I want to bang the Animal Crossing dog so goddamn bad. I can't stand it anymore. Every time I go to Town Hall, I get a massive erection. I've seen literally every Rule 34 post of her there is online! My dreams are nothing but constant fucking sex with Isabel. I'm sick of waking up every morning with six nuts in my boxer! Boxers and knowing that those are nuts that should have been busted inside of Isabel's tight dog pussy. I want her to have my mutant human dog babies. Fuck! My fucking mom caught 
me with the neighbor's dog. I dressed her in my sister's skirt and went to fucking town. She hasn't said a word to me in 10 hours and I'm worried she's gonna take away my 3DS. I might not ever get to see Isabel again. Thank you, Espo. Very good. Drag beating, Dolores. Imagine explaining the psycho trips that is AC3. Is this Nook's diary? Uh, this one doesn't have a name attached to it. I wonder... A lot of these... A lot of these are copy pastas. Maybe I should bring up like a little notepad. I'm gonna bring up like a little notepad. So I could... Well, maybe... You know what? Maybe it's better if you guys can't see what's coming. Um, also, I'm gonna put a little disclaimer... Disclaimer. I am just reading whatever people send me. Here we go. There we go. Here's the heaven thing, Big B. I spaced out halfway in Ace Combat. Lauren was dragged back into reality. <laughs> I don't want to fuck that dog. <laughs> oh, God. All right. This fucking rabbit inflicts me with an insurmountable amount of lust. And for that, I must correct her down to her very soul. Every day, she continues to control my mind with her succulent words, knowing full well the weight of her actions. Pippa knows that the consequences of her actions will lead to ultimate correction, and that only makes my infernal rod of iron, born from the embers of hell itself, even more furious than it can possibly be. I must correct this rabbit, not only with my rod, but with my very being. Before and after every stream, I will bend her over, restrain her, gag her, and thrust my spear straight into her ass. One that's fully ripe for my suppository. My cock is her anal medicine. Her sweat would stain the bed sheets beyond cleaning. Her body would be marked with the scent of my semen. I hope my parents aren't watching this one. For days to come. And her voice would shake like the heavens being torn asunder. This fucking rabbit that wishes so desperately to be knocked up with my seed doesn't deserve such a reward. Until I have fully corrected her ass to fit the shape of my rod. Her ass would be my pussy to claim, all to myself. A king upon his throne, as the rabbit bites her bedsheets in glee and terror. Fear me, Pippa! You need to be bred in the ass, and I'm going to breed your ass. You will be unable to live without anal for more than six hours at a time. You will pause streams just to satisfy yourself. You will be the cutest rabbit anal princess. Uh, thank you, Anon. Very cool. Trimzing beep 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 mouth. I hope this is one my parents skip. <laughs> oh god. Oh god, my eyes are burning. Okay. Julian then went to Dolores. Mom, Dad, don't look. Shane Dramelling and Dolores pull up a notepad to record names. Oh my god. Mr. Clark, thank you for the. Thank you for the. Ah, it disappeared. Hold on. You were too Go back to Ace Combat! Go back to Ace Combat! Very disturbing. Thank you for the four season one. I would love for someone to write one of these for Project Wingman. One of, one, 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 one of the things I just read. Brody, thank you for the Hey, Pippa, did you know that Ace Combat 3 is in the same universe as Galaga and Mis Mr. Driller? I should move over to this screen. Oh, I'm not on this screen. Hold on. Here we go. I feel like this is a better this is a better screen because I don't have anything on the side. Hold on. Grab this. Paste this here. Okay. Mom 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 mom. Mom 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 mom. All right. You know what? Maybe I should just Here we go. Here we go. Go dark, Pippa! Go dark mode? Like this? Put it over your eyes. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus! Jesus! There's a hundred dollar super in here somewhere. Twitch topic with the 98 cents! Base, Pippa list, heard boxing, and Dolores, world's most sane, Kapipi, burning soul, and Fred Dolores, glad this is the first stream of Pippa I'm watching. Shut up. Team up thing with 221. Are there any rules to submitting posts? Uh, if it has slurs and stuff in it, can you censor those? Apocalypse for everything, but also no like um I don't know. Use common sense, right? 
Don't send me, like, people's home addresses and shit. Uh, I'll build a radio thing. Oh no, my fanfiction got leaked on the internet! Apocalypse of Everything from Lewis. You can just read the first chapter of this, but this Calvin and Hobbes fic needs more exposure. Tiger Chronicles by Crazy Raw. You gotta submit it in the thing, man. Airline food thing. Dolores, bro, I can't breathe. Uh, Flaky Mon thing with a 4 1. You have the strongest cringe filter I've ever seen. Please take my money. Filter. Thank you, thank you. I, Agent John Glow thing with the Dolores. Someone is degenerate and belongs in the pit. Rabbit thing with the two dollars. This is what Pippa wishes Colrus would say to her. Uh, somebody made an AI Colrus and had it read this. I think I have it on my computer somewhere, actually. Because I was saving it for like a stream. I was like, this would be like a funny thing to... To show... To show people. I have no idea where it is. But then I was like... Maybe it wouldn't be. Maybe, maybe it wouldn't be. I have no idea. I have so many files saved. I have so fucking many file, files saved. And I'm scared to just start opening stuff. Because I don't know... I don't know what's in some of it. Um... But yeah. Yeah, somebody made a... Somebody made an AI. Show us? Oh my god. Can somebody post it in the, um... Capipolis channel. And I'll just play the audio from there. Are you allowed to post stuff like that on there? I don't know. Is that ban worthy? You didn't screen any of this? No. Oh no, she's here! Hi! Hello. Oh, is this it? Hold on. This was actually just a, uh, just... Rabbit inflicts yep. me with an insurmountable amount of lust. And for that, it's so I must quiet. correct her down to her very soul. Every this is so fucked up. To control my mind with her succulent words, knowing full this well is so the fucked up. Her actions. Pippa knows that the consequences of her actions will lead oh, to go. ultimate correction. And that only makes my infernal rod of iron, born from the embers of hell itself, Why did you say even this? more is this Chris? furious no, than it not can possibly be. This is, um, I must correct this. This is an AI version of the Pokemon Masters EX voice actor. Which I'm not going to say the name because it probably doesn't want his name tied to this. Rabbit. Not only with my rod, but with my very so being. Fucked up. Before and it's after so every up. stream, I will bend her over, restrain her, gag her, and... Yeah, we're done with that. We're done with that. Thank you, Tex, for having that on hand. Very much appreciated. <laughs> Truly cursed. Picker, tell me when it's over, I beg of you. It's over, it's done. Oh god, music got loud. Because I turned up the music slider. Ah, there we go. Okay. Alright! <laughs> Man, they were 1337, a little because Pippa's reading the funny without restraint. Oh, the Merkel Hopper thing. Let's Pippa be honest. Why did you really save this? So I could show it on stream! Tony Stark named Red Lords. Go to the nearest priest, get some holy water, and douse your computer with it to cleanse it of your demon known as chat. It's a conviction thing. Let's Pippa reads our supposedly. We made it here, boys. I love that you're the five dollars. This stream is so damn risky. Someone could submit an expert from Hitler's banned book or the anarchist cookbook, and we wouldn't know, probably. Uh, I don't know. My chat might know. Um... <laughs> There was like hundred dollar donos and I feel oh there we go. Read it, nigga, without a wait. No, I did read that one. Is it is it just like super far behind? I feel bad because I think I missed some hundred dollar donos, but I don't see them in the list. If I miss your donos, I'll catch up with them at the end. Grab a thing or two, Lord. So this is what you fall asleep to every night. Yep, you know it. Jailing for Lord's people just here casually NTRing her chat. It's chat that made it. Jesus Christ. Okay, this is a PNG. Okay. Oh god. Oh god! What happened to the hundred dollar ear rape? I need to I need to come up with a new one. Mr. Felding, for Lars Bauman, go to your bed furry? You you furry? F furry? It's music loud. I'm turning down a bit. I don't like that. Cowboy has always been a dying breed, but he takes his dying slowly, perched upon his steed. The prairie is his prison, his church, his wife. 
If you take away his sky, you take away his life. Yet where does he go when the range is all closed? Does he hi retire to his bunkhouse in depressed repose? No, he climbs back in that saddle just to bide his time. The cowboy knows a good death is hard to find. That was from Josh. Thank you, Josh. Um... What the hell? Oh, no. Ah, there we go. Uh, this is from Uncle Stumpy's Emporium of Pain. B-16. Hear dogs obviously attacking something in the backyard. Go out and get them to leave it alone. Oh shit, it's a bloody possum. Think it's dead. Go put it in the garbage. Notice it's still breathing. Decide to put it out of its misery. Grab a broken skateboard and smash it over its head. Possum starts convulsing. Oh god, why aren't you dying? Keep beating it. Feel like Christopher Bale killing Jared Leto in American Psycho. It finally dies. Check the body and see the dogs barely scratched it. My face when I remember possums play dead. Dun dun. Yeah, it says Christopher Bale. His actual name is Christian Bale, isn't it? It's actually Christian Bale. You fake fan! Alrighty. Oh, it is Christopher Bale. Is it? He's also British. What? You're fucking with me. Man, I remember... I remember putting my pet turkey out of its misery. Using, uh... This is gonna be a really fucked up story if you don't like animal death. Um... So... I had a pet turkey, and the pet turkey got attacked by a dog, and... Um... I didn't... I didn't... Take good enough care of the wound, basically. And it became infected with flies and stuff, and it got... It got really bad. Um... And I... I... I took care of her... For... A couple months. Like, just trying to... Just trying to... Keep her on life support, basically. And... She ended up... Getting to the point where, like, she couldn't walk around and stuff. So... Decided to put her out of her misery. And... So I take the axe, right? And I put a board down. And I go... To cut her head off. And I'm not... Gigabrain. So... So fucked up. So, the board, right? When I bring the axe down... On... Little pet turkey's head. Or her neck. It only cut, like, half of it. And she started, like, violently convulsing and shaking and stuff. And I... I it, it became, like, a mad panic to try and sever off the rest of the head. And it's just... And sometimes that shit just haunts me, man. Sometimes I just remember, like, her little body, like, wiggling around and shit. Man! Ah! It's fine, it was already dead. Ho hopefully, hopefully she was already dead from the first one. Ah, oh, man. I have to take the turkey to a vet. Uh, that wasn't really an option. I didn't have the money, so... Should have snapped it. That's crazy, Pippa. Did you eat her, though? No, I didn't eat her. I had been giving her this horse medicine... ...that... ...if ingested, causes cancer. So... Camila, then I'm big B. Like peeing, peeling an onion with you? What? Peeling an onion? What a waste, though. No, it's um. Oh fuck, I forget the name of the medicine. It's like this yellow ivermectin. No, it's not ivermectin. It was like this yellow paste that you put on wounds. But um, I want I want the horse turkey meat. No, likely dead on the first strike. I I hope so. I hope so. You just panic. I love that turkey. Malcolm Langley with that two dollars. Try. Oh my god. Anyways. Next one. Imp Midna is unironically forty pounds of pussy and ass. She's just floating drumsticks with a smug sm single. F <laughs> I'm gonna try this again. Maybe I should um. Maybe I should. Apply a filter like this. Make it a bit more dramatic. Oh, God. 
What do you guys think? Tonal <laughs> whiplash. Tonal. <laughs> Tonal whiplash. Okay. Imp Midna is unironically 40 pounds of pussy and ass. She's just floating drumsticks with a smug single fang grin. That's not even artists exaggerating it. Her body mass is actually 80% in her cheeks, thighs, and pot belly. She's not a pear, she's a light bulb. They had to know exactly what the fuck they were doing. I refuse to believe otherwise. People being creepy fuckers and sexualizing the Inklings and the Bird Girl from Wind Waker and all that shit, sure, that's on the fans. But Midna being a 40-pound pussy that grinds on top of Link's head and bosses him around is 100% on Nintendo. Her imp form was actually more sexualized than her true form, which is astonishing since her true form is literally a completely naked woman in harem silks with black body paint covering over her bits. Thank you, Terakuma. Very nice. Praise be the glorious imp. They have a point. They do have a point. Is he wrong, though? No? You're sick. <laughs> Nintendo be like, be glad we allowed Imp Midna to exist. Okay, this is a... this is a Google document. Okay. Oh my fucking god, this is long. Bro, I'm not reading all of this. I'll read, like, maybe the first or second paragraphs. This was submitted by... Anon. <laughs> of course it was. Leah's Fantasy. It started as a day like any other, but it would be a day etched deeply into Leah's big brother's memory. On her streams, Leah excuted... excuted... A lively and boisterous persona that concealed her shy and timid nature off-camera. She rarely engaged in conversations with others, often finding solace in her interactions with the other phase girls on Discord, rather than seeking connections with friends from school or even her own siblings. While many were familiar with the notorious Rin Mama and the less discussed Rin Moto, there was one family member Leah never mentioned, her older brother. Several years her senior, he occupied a room just a few feet away from hers, Whenever Rin Mama was away, he assumed the role of caretaker, primarily responsible for Leah's well-being, as Rin Moto could fend for herself. And we'll leave that there! And we'll leave that one there! What a wholesome story! That was so... That was so wholesome! That was... That was... Wow! Cause it's like... It's like Chat's... Her, her big brother, right? Yeah! I don't want to read that one without her permission. I don't. I don't, I don't want to. I just. I don't want to make things weird. Uh, sniff and sniff out. Thank you for. Oh, sniff sniff out. Thank you for the two dollars. Reading chat is like listening to train wreck. Black wing. Then come big peepee. See, I'm saying ten dollars. You better keep reading that. No, no. I'll. Uh, I'll ask Leah's permission. Or I'll talk to Leah about it. And if she's comfortable with it, maybe another time. It's what Leah would want. Oh my god. I thought likers wouldn't swing that way. I know, right? I thought they were gay. Okay, this is a this is a YouTube video. This is not a What is this? This weirdest laugh I've ever heard. I'm not here I'm not here to watch videos, man. We're here to read shit. Those are Beatles. Uh and all this Rex thing were two dollars. Leah pitched it on stream pips. Did she? Does anybody know? Did Leah... Did Leah actually... Is this a, a product of her own... <laughs> creation? Question mark? She did? It's true. Don't believe them. We're doing a little draw. I think... I think you're trolling. I think you're trolling. Okay. Um, apology for bad English. It is my first language and... Where were you when Club Penguin died? Oh. Uh, this is from Fur... Furbot 300. Where were you when Club Penguin died? I was at house eating Dorito when phone ring. Club Penguin is killed. No. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> this is from Cockwaba. I like to creep around my home and act like a goblin. I don't know why, but I just enjoy doing this. 
Maybe it's my way of dealing with stress or something, but I just do it about once every week. Generally, I'll carry around a sack and creep around in a sort of crouch-walking position, making goblin noises. Then, I'll walk around my house and pick up various different trinkets and put them in my bag while saying stuff like, I'll be having that! and laughing maniacally in my goblin voice. Trinkets can include anything from shit I find on the ground to cutlery or other utensils. The other day, I was talking to my neighbors and they mentioned hearing weird noises like that. Like what I wrote about and I was just internally screaming the entire conversation. I'm 99% sure they don't know it's me, but god that 1% chance is seriously weighing on my mind. They know it's you. Uh, this is from Pippa's Armpits. Show Pippits! Very nice, thank you. Flaming TP thing, Lord, did anyone make you read steamed hams? I just got here, not yet. Magnolus Rex and Lordly uh, pitched it on stream, Pips. So production for Lord's good evening, Pippa. I bought a car today, it was nice. I highly recommend watching the M3 documentary by the squid. You will say forever. Uh, this is from Colris. What the fuck did you just hold oh hold on? Good one, I like that one. I like that one. Not reading Jordan Peterson's voice! How much people ran here? <laughs> USA! USA! Oh, that's a lot of words. Too bad I'm not reading them! <laughs> oh my god, open window check? What? My window is not open. Uh, sniff, sniff out anyone to doors. So a goblin that crouches? A crotch goblin? No. Kill some dead anyone. 33, 33! Pippa TTS love! Exandals anyone for the $50 reduce. My mom used to shack up with a guy who raised his own chickens. One night a raccoon was sneaking around and they sicked their dogs on it. After they got it pinned, mom snacked it to death with a bat. It started convulsing before the final blow. Jesus Christ. Cody, thank you for the $10. That was beautiful. Thank you. I remember one time we found a possum in the chicken coop. And Papa Kim walked out and he grabbed the possum by the tail. And he was like holding the possum, and I was like, "Whoa!" And he's like, "They don't bite none," and I was like, "What?" I don't believe you. Your neighbors are concerned. They probably are. Yeah, let's not talk about any more animal death. Let's not talk about any more <laughs> animal death. <laughs> ah. Um. This is from beep 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 beep. The missile. Oh. <clears throat> the missile knows where it is at all times. It knows this because it knows where it isn't. By subtracting where it is from where it isn't, or where it isn't from where it is, whichever is greater, it obtains a difference or deviation. The guidance subsystem uses deviations to generate corrective commands to drive the missile from a position where it is to position where it isn't, and arriving at a position where it wasn't, it now is. 
Consequently, the position where it is is now the position that it wasn't, and it follows that position that it was is now the position that it isn't. In the event that the position that it is in is not the position that it wasn't, the system has acquired a variation. The variation being the difference between where the missile is and where it wasn't. If variation is considered to be a significant factor, it too may be corrected by the GEA. However, the missile must also know where it was. The missile guidance computer scenario works as follows, because a variation has modified some of the information the missile has obtained. It is not ju sure just where it is. However, it is sure where it isn't, within reason, and it knows where it was. It now subtracts where it should be from where it wasn't, or vice versa, and by differentiating this from the algebraic sum of where it shouldn't be, and where it was, it is able to obtain the deviation and its variation, which is called error. Naruto. <laughs> I don't know Naruto. Um, what the fuck? What? What the? What? Okay, this one I need to show you guys the picture. This one you guys need to see the picture for. Now wrap it. Shut up. Hold on. Where'd it go? Okay. So here's this. Here, here's this beautiful creation. This is from Esker Curve. We order Whopper with 1,050 bacon strips. Struggle to level comically huge burger. Well, that didn't take long. Just yesterday, we shared the story of how our... Of how our own Mr. Sato capitalized on Burger King Japan's current 15 bacon strips for 100 yen. One dollar and twenty U.S. dollars uh, promotion by ordering a Whopper with 105 bacon strips. When Mr. Sato managed to finish the burger, he didn't seem to be in the best shape afterwards. Falling into a meat-induced coma and then suddenly breaking out of it only to run out of the room with his hand covering his mouth. Surely, we thought, Mr. Sato has finally learned his lesson. That consuming stacks of bacon is a task better left to professionals. Why did the music pause? Here we go. Ooh, fitting music. So imagine our surprise when he came into the office holding a plastic bag sagging under the weight of a 10... of a 1,050 bacon strip Whopper. It took the poor folks at Burger King roughly two hours to assemble the bacon behemoth. We're guessing they either had to have more bacon delivered from other stores or just slaughter a pig on the spot. In either case, they did a stand-up job, even going so far as to carefully wrap its entire length in layers of Burger King wrapping paper to prevent the tower of bacon from falling over. After Mr. Sato brought the burger in, we helped peel off the layers of grease-soaked paper, careful not to upset its balance as if it were some cruel butcher's Jenga. We removed the last bit of wrapping, and there it was! The top half of a Whopper sitting comically upon an epic throne of bacon, with a sliver of lettuce sprouting from the base, suggesting that the bottom half of the burger may be salvaged yet. There really is not much else we can tell you about the burger that the images can't. It weighs about... It weighs in at 2.7 kilograms, that's 5.92 pounds, and roughly 14,300 calories. Enough energy to sustain a person for about 10 days. Before going to work on the burger, Mr. Sato once again began his primal ritual of psyching himself up, shouting, This is what a real hamburger lover eats! 10 strips! 100 strips! Like that's enough! A real man needs 1,050 strips of bacon! Mr. Saddle then plunges his face into the top of the burger, holding on to the top bun and a layer of bacon below the beef patty for support. Eventually, he runs out of burger to supplement his bacon and simply begins stuffing bacon into his mouth by the fistful, all the while ranting, DELICIOUS! THIS IS WHAT MEAT IS ALL ABOUT! THIS IS THE TASTE OF A REAL HAMBURGER! But you're only eating bacon. In any case, thanks to Mr. Sato's gluttony, we have learned that there is seemingly no limit to the amount of bacon you can add to a Whopper. Or maybe it's because this is Japan and they're just that dedicated to their customers. We're not sure if we could walk into a Burger King in America and expect the same level of service. It should go without saying that you should probably not attempt to eat 1,050 strips of bacon at home, but if you do, make sure to call a good two hours in advance so they have time to thaw their stocks of bacon and call for backup. Or, you know, just go to the supermarket and buy your own bacon. Well, that was majestic. Um, that's certainly something you can do with your time and money. That's... That's an idea. Uh, they would not do this in America. 
They would put like 10 strips on and then they'd be like, sorry, we can't put it on anymore. Next angel thing, Fred Lloyd looks like something Elvis Presley would enjoy on a regular basis. Don't believe me? Look up Fool's Gold Wolf and its history with Elvis. Ask a crap thing, Fred Lloyd. As a control system engineer, I approve of this copy pasta. I assume we meant the other one. That's a, that's a lot of bacon grease. This is... This is, this is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot. But you know what? I admire the dedication. I admire the dedication. Alright. This one is from Anon. Back in my school days, I attended a massive school that had five floors. Because of how big the place was, security could only handle so many incidents. This made it easy for people to cause havoc in one floor and quickly disappear to another. Me and my friends had beef with another group of kids and we regularly sabotaged each other. One day, we found our floor's restrooms clogged with traffic cones and shit. We pointed fingers at the other group and got to work on getting them back. We stuck into the rival group's floor restroom and turned the ceiling into shit-stained stalagmites. We might have jumped the shark because hours later the bathroom got locked up due to it being labeled a health hazard and our principal stating over the intercom, I WILL FIND WHO DID THIS! We never got caught. Honestly, I don't even know if it was even the other group who clogged our toilets. How did they sneak the traffic cones into the building? How did they sneak the traffic cones in? What? Yeah, that sounds like such a nice school. <laughs> That's so gross. That's <laughs> so fucking gross. One of one of the houses uh me and my parents moved into had had feces on Oh shit. What was it? Was was it the ceiling and the walls or just the walls? I don't remember. Mama can Mama can ended up cleaning it up. Yeah. Okay, this is from... Komodo. Unit 731. Oh, boy. Short for Manchu Detachment 731, and also known as the Kamo Detachment and the Ishii Unit, was a covert biological and chemical warfare research and development Units of the Imperial Japanese Army that engaged in lethal human experimentation and biological weapons manufacturing during the Second Sino-Japanese War, 1937-1945, and World War II. The unit is estimated to have killed between 200,000 and 300,000 people. It was based in the Pingfang district of Harbin, the largest city in the Japanese puppet state of Manchukuo, now Northeast China, and had an active branch office throughout China and Southeast Asia. And we'll call it there! And we'll call it there. Yeah. Thank you. Next! Uh, let me translate this. Bom, 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 bom. Oh, that was an imager link I just copied. Hold on. Alright. Let's, um... What, 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 why is it not... Control! C! Okay. What is, what is this phrase? I don't know, I'm scared to read it. I'm scared, when you just send... When you just send stuff, I'm scared. I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's in, it's in Brazilian Portuguese. Pippa, you have a disclaimer. I do. Hold on. I don't. I don't know this. It. It seems like a, a harmless phrase. Yeah, I'll post it in mod chat. Google brings up Coco, which. Really, really could be indicative of it being either safe or absolutely not safe. It could really go either way. <laughs> Coco got away with so much shit. Just avoid it. Definitely harmless. Mm. Coco or Coco? Kiryu Coco. Coco. 
chocolate cocoa or dragon co dragon cocoa? Zill the Merit, thank you for the five dollars. Having managed Arby's, I would have done that, but I'd have charged them the whole $140 for the entire case of bacon. It's bait! Okay. Now you man on the dollars. BK employees would go on break. Next Angel, same with the $10. Have you seen the Internet Historian's video on Rainforest? I have! I freaking lost it at the part where the used diapers being tossed on the car hoods in the hotel parking lot. Yeah, that was... that was... that was... that was gross. Oh, gross. Good video, though. Oh, it's bait! Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, Tony Stark, they were jewelers intensify forward firepower. Too late! Okay. This is from Harry. Pippa hates. Crossed out. Love! Um. Lift like a madman for two years. Finally, get a hot girlfriend. Always mask the stench of her shit by, lightning ma by lighting matches and candles after pooping. Anyone else been disillusioned with the fruits of becoming fit? Anon finally realizes women are retarded. Welcome, we've been waiting for you. Okay. Okay. What? <laughs> No name attached to this one. I was only nine years old. I loved Shrek so much I had all the merchandise and movies. I pray to Shrek every night before bed, thanking him for the life I've been given. Shrek is love, I say. Shrek is life. My dad hears me and he calls me a F-slur. I knew he was just jealous of my devotion for Shrek. I called him a cunt. He slaps me and sends me to go to sleep. I'm crying now when my face hurts. I lay in bed and it's really cold. A warmth is moving towards me. I feel something touch me. It's Shrek! I'm so happy! He whispers into my ear. This is my swamp. He grabs me with his powerful ogre hands and puts me on my hands and knees. I'm ready. I spread my ass cheeks for Shrek. He penetrates my butthole. It hurts so much, but I do it for Shrek. I can feel my butt tearing as my eyes start to water. I push against his force. I want to please Shrek. He roars, a mighty roar, as he fills my butt with his love. My dad walks in. Shrek looks him straight in the eye and says, It's all over now. Shrek leaves through the window. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. What the fuck? Very nice, Anon. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Bahamut, thank you for the Dolores. The service at a Burger King in America. True. The Hangout Faces, thank you for the Dolores. Semenology Book Club win is a cookbook made by someone hinged woman. Also installed a short stroke trigger on my EC9 while watching you yesterday. Semenology? Emperor creatine, they can be beating it all over now. What? I'll have to take a look at that. I'll, I'll have to take a look at that. Okay. This one is from... Die Friendly Owned. Stuxnet is a malicious computer worm first uncovered in 2010 and thought to have been in development since at least 2005. Stuxnet's target supervisee... Fuck. Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, SCADA, systems and is believed to be responsible for causing substantial damage to the nuclear program of Iran. Although neither country has openly admitted responsibility, the worm is widely understood to be a cyber weapon built jointly by the United States and Israel in collaborative effort known as Operation Olympic Games. The program, started during the Bush administration, was rapidly expanded within the first months of Barack Obama's presidency. Okay. Next! Next! Be me! First day as manager at McDonald's! I have to fire someone for the first time. Be really nervous. Go into the office. See the person I have to fire. He's really old! I just can't do it! I just can't! He's been working here for 40 years! I can't fire him! He's like a grandpa to me! I just can't do it. I ask him to leave the office. I put my head in my hands. I can't believe I have to do this. And it's got a sad pipi. 
Well, that was just sad. Here's the sad Pepe. Hello, Pepe. Sorry, I'm like, hello, Fluffy. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> this is sad. I don't like the sad Pepe's. They actually make me sad. Oh boy, what is this? Okay. Hold on. I'm take a sip. Okay. Um. Um. Sad free zone. Mi Chan beat the frogs. She beat the frogs. She beat the frogs! Okay. This is A Word by Chesterton from 1915. A word came forth in Galilee, a word like to a star. It climbed and rang and blessed and burnt wherever brave hearts are. A word of sudden secret hope of trial and increase. Of wrath and pity, fused in fire, and passion, kissing peace. A star that o'er the cityed world beckoned, a sword of flame. A star with myriad thunders tongue, the mighty word there came. The wedges dart passed into it, the groan of timber wanes. The ringing of the river nails, the shrieking of the plains. The hammering on the roofs at mom, the busy workshop roar. The hiss of shavings drifted deep along the windy floor. The heat brown toilers, crooning song, the hum of human worth. Mingled of all the noise of crafts, the ringing word went forth. The splash of nets passed into it, the grind of sand and shell. The boat hooks clash, the boazos jar, the cries to buy and sell. The flapping of the landed shoals, the canvas crackling free. And through all varied notes and cries, the roaring of the sea. The noise of little lives and brave, of needy lives and high. In gathering all the throes of earth, the living word went by. Each giant... Oh. Isn't that dying? Is it back? Earth's giant bowed down to it, an empire's huge eclipse. When darkness sat above the thrones, seven thunders on her lips. The woes of cities entered it, the clang of idols falls. The scream of filthy Caesars stabbed high in their brazen balls. The dim horse floods of naked men, the world realm's snapping girth. The trumpets of apocalypse, the darkness of the earth. The wrath that break the eternal lamp and hid the eternal hill. A word, world's destruction loading, the word went onward still. The blaze of creeds passed on to it, the hiss of horrid fires. The headlong spear, the scarlet cross, the hair shirt and the briars. The cloistered brethren's thunderous chant, the errant champion's song. The shifting of the crowns and thorns, the tangle of the strong. The shattering fall of crest and crown and shield and cross and cope. The tearing of, tearing of gods of time, the blight of prince and pope. The reign of ragged millions leagued to wrenched a loaded debt. Lo <laughs> Loud with many throated roar, the word went forward yet. The song of wheels passed into it, the roaring and the smoke. The riddle of the wanton wage, the frogs that burn and choke. The breaking of the girths of gold, the knees that creep and swell. The strengthening hope, the dazzling, dazing, fuck. The strengthening hope, the dazing light, the deafening evangel. Throughout. <laughs> the ISP keeps dying and it's spooking me. The strengthening hope, the dazing light, the deafening evangel. Through kingdoms dead and empires damned, through changes without cease. With earthquake chaos born and fed, rose, and the word was peace. I'm not ESL. <laughs> Evangel, Evangel, Evangel! Evangelion. Ah! It just skips every so often. Okay, I'm sorry. Blaming your ESL on your ISP. Shut up! Anyways, that was from Belloc Rex. Oh, let's remove the filter. Okay. This is from... <laughs> this is from Krampus86. Um... I'm gonna just... In this thread, post... 
I can't I can't read. In this thread, ports you've never used. And it's a it's a funny image. The, the SATA port, the ESATA port, and then the the, vagi the vagina diagram. Haha. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not reading out the numbers. If you wanted me to read the numbers, I'm not reading out the numbers. Okay. What is this? Oh god, it's another Shrek one. It's another fucking Shrek one. This is from Urugaga. Uruga. Shrek gets Shreked. Puss in boots. Be 16. Go to high school. Today we are watching a movie of our choice in history class. Bring Jimmy Neutron the movie. So excited. Get to class and see F slur Shrek lover. He's wearing gay fake Shrek ears. He wants to watch Shrek too. Call him a fucking cunt. Say Shrek is Drek. Jimmy is love. Jimmy is life. Suddenly, the scent of onions fills the air. All-Star starts playing. A massive green figure bursts through the ceiling. Oh, fuck. What's all this I hear about me being Drek, laddie? He removes his clothes, revealing a fully eschrected 20-foot-long schlong. Sh oh, shrock. <laughs> it's dripping swamp juices. Prepare my anus for total destruction. But wait, I can hear something coming from outside. Sounds like... A jet! Jimmy Neutron crashes through the window with his jetpack. He's completely naked with a gym boner that makes Shrek look like a... F makes Shreks look fucking puny. Jimmy forces Shrek under the ground. Tears streaming down Shrek's face. The internet's dying. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, where was I? ISP is censoring it. Okay, sounds like a jet. Jimmy Neutron crashes through the window with his jetpack. He's completely naked with a gym boner that makes Shreks look fucking puny. Jimmy forces Shrek onto the ground. Tears streaming down Shrek's face. Broger classmate looking on in horror. Blaze, help me, laddie. Broger kid doesn't even look at him. He rips off his fake Shrek ears and smashes his copy of Shrek too. I hand him Jimmy Neutron the movie. He nods knowingly and puts the movie into the DVD player on the classroom TV. We watch the whole movie while Jimmy fucks Shrek in the ass. The movie ends. Jimmy yells, got a blast! And unloads a wave of purple floor from his gym cock into Shrek's destroyed butthole. He Shrek explodes. Oh, the purple floor begins overflowing inside of Shrek. He Shrek explodes and showers us all in ogre blood and purple flurp. Jimmy approaches the broger, gives him a duck, and pats him on the head. He flies out the hole in the ceiling with his jetpack. Whole class cheers. It's finally over. Jimmy is love. Jimmy is life. Oh boy. <laughs> Thank you, Urugaga. Very nice. This is from... Rusted String. User Howling Mutant. Women actually respect if you tell them that you will never go down on them on the first date. They know better than anyone how fucked up shit is down there. From user Thomas Official. You gotta stop obsessing on these geological topics, son. You're gonna be found in a trap house surrounded by hooker body parts yelling, Say, it's just me! I dissected it and it's just me! While some SWAT police vomits and catches an instant PTSD. Okay. Okay. This is good background music. Any first thing on Do Lords, I hated every second of that. What the fuck? Um. Life. This is a link to Justin Trudeau in blackface. Uh, well, we're gonna skip over that. Just, it just says Justin Trudeau is responsible for the for the fires. Oh, I, oh man, I already read this one for a short, that, but it hasn't been edited and posted yet. Hold on.
A lot of build up for this. <clears throat> B17. Miss. Nice. That's probably my favorite green text. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. That was from Liquid? Um. This one is from Pippa Love. Um. It's a picture of me. And it says... Fuck my sister. Tell her it was a mistake. We shouldn't do it again. Fuck my sister again. Tell her we really need to stop. Want her like a drug. Fuck her again. I feel like I could drop dead at any moment knowing what I'm doing. Giving me, gives me so much anxiety, but I can't stop. Thank you, Anon. Very cool. Uh, this is a link to uh, the island of Dr. Moreau from Mr. Yura. I haven't forgotten! I haven't forgotten! Leave me alone! I am in the middle of carrying a League of Legends game about to close it out, and my brawless wife brings me a sandwich, not asked for, with chips as I get a double kill bot lane. So, how's your day going? Uh, that's by everyone's favorite, uh, mixer streamer, Ninja. Thank you, Ninja. Very cool. Take a zip. What is mighty name noise? Is this Pippa's graduation tour kickoff? Oh, you know it, baby. Okay. Oh my god, this is kind of long. This is from Mullet Wisdom. All the people here who bought this wireless tungsten cube to admire its surreal heft have precisely the wrong mindset. I, in my exalted wisdom and unbridled ambition, bought this cube to become fully accustomed to the intensity of its density, to make its weight bearable and in fact normal to me, so that all the world around me may fade into a fluffy arena of gravitational inconsequence, and it has worked to profound success. I have carried the tungsten with me, have grown attached to the downward pull of its small form, its desire to be one with the floor. This force has become so normal to me that lifting any other object now feels like lifting cotton candy or a fluffy pillow. Big, burly, manly men who pump iron now seem to me as little children who raise mere aluminum. I can hardly remember the days before I became a man of tungsten. How distant those days seem now. How burdened by the apparent heaviness of everyday objects. I laugh at the Philistines who still operate in a world devoid of tungsten. Their shoulders thin and unempowered by the experience of bearing tungsten. Ha! Huh, what fools. Blissful in their ignorance. Anesthetized their lack of a meaningful struggle. Devoid of passion. Nietzsche once said that a man who has a why can bear almost any how. But a man who has a tungsten cube can bear any object less dense. And all this talk of why and how becomes unnecessary. Schopenhauer once said that every man takes the limits of his own field of vision for the limits of the world. Tungsten expands the limits of a man's field of vision by showing him an example of increased in density, in comparison to which the everyday objects to which he was formerly accustomed gain a light and airy quality. Who can lament the tragedy of life when surrounded by such, a light by such lightweight objects? Who can cry in a world of styrofoam and cushions? To give this cube a rating of anything less than 5 stars would, to con would be to condemn life itself. Who am I as a mere mortal to judge the most compact of all affordable materials? No, I say gratefully to whichever grand being may have created this universe. Good job on the tungsten, it sure is dense. I sit here with my tungsten cube, transcendent above death itself. For insofar as this tungsten cube will last forever, I am in the presence of immortality. True and real? I prefer Shungite. Oh my god, this is longer than I'm used to saying. Holy shit. Oh wait, no, I think it I think I think this is just the full thing. Um this is from You already know my name because I'm your husband. TSing with the two dollars? Hello. Press the training, two dollars. It's all me! 
uh, music and friction. Thank you, Dolores. I need an old priest and a young priest, Dr. Evil. Many first thing, Dolores. Oh god, where'd it go? I hated every second of that. What the fuck? Google the fine. Oi, May. Thank you for the five dollars. Taylor Walsh singer, ten dollars. McChickens are expensive now, and it's the government's fault. Mahomet, thank you for the dollars. The Burger King closed in my place a long time ago for selling drugs. I always imagine, um, what's his name? Oh fuck, my internet's dying. Mel Brooks. I always imagine Mel Brooks saying that. I love Mel Brooks movies. Shut it down. Shut up. Hello. Um, I remember my family. I don't. I don't know where they got it from, but they got like a box set that had like a bunch of his movies. And I remember, I used to. I used to watch all of them repeatedly. Except for fucking Vertigo. Is I think. I think it was called Vertigo. I didn't like that one. I put that one on and I was like, why is this one so bad compared to all the others? The others are literal masterpieces. Peppa said hello to me. Hello, Fax Tracks. I, uh, I think Men in Tights is probably my favorite. It's just it's just delightfully silly. Gabrielle R, thank you for the list. Hearing about your tongue childhood stories is my tungsten cube. Alright. Vertigo is kind of an acquired taste. For me, it's Young Frankenstein. That are Blazing Saddles. I like Men in Tights. All right. Men in tights is the worst. No, it's not. Same thing with the two dollars blazing saddles. Watch long win. Oh my god. Okay. This is really long. I don't know if I'll read the whole thing. But again, this one is from you. Already know my name because I'm your husband. I would literally never stop trying to impregnate Pippa. Every day I would wake her up by coming in her, and every night I would come in her right before going to sleep. Which I would go- I would do with my dick stuck inside her bunny pussy. I would take some Viagra before bed just to maintain my erection so that she'll be ready in the morning. When I thrust into her like an animal and slather her in kisses. Part of our wedding vows would have as many children as physically possible. I wouldn't even care if she's already pregnant. I'll fuck her while she's pregnant. And she'll get double pregnant. I'll fill her with so much cum every day that she'll look pregnant even when she isn't. Which she'll never be after we're married. I would do everything in my power to make Pippa as fertile as possible. I'd give her fertility drugs. I'd give her uterus massages. Breast massages. I wouldn't let her go 12 hours without at least one spastic orgasm. I'll even break her homemade lactation-inducing biscuits. Oh, bake her. Uh, to help her get a point of hyperlactation syndrome so that she'll be seeping out multiple quarts of sweet cream per day, which I will save and drink just so that I can tell her how delicious it is. I'll make her so fertile that triplets will be the minimum number she's carrying at any time. Her natural belly shape will be a fucking sphere. I would literally never stop doting on her. I would respond to her every beck and call and I would come inside her again each time she asked for something. She would be so pregnant all the time she would literally not be able to stand up straight anymore even after menopause. Her spine would be permanently bent out of shape to accommodate a pregnant belly. Even after she can't get pregnant anymore I would just keep putting more eggs into her. I would clone her purely so I can put f fresh eggs from the clone inside her after she runs out of them. If she doesn't have any eggs, I will synthesize them from her DNA. She would have so much progesterone running through her veins at any time that even the thought of being pregnant would seem alien to her. Of not being pregnant would seem alien to her. Imagine marrying Pippa and she tells you she wants a kid and that she'll be fine and she'll keep her VTuber duties up while pregnant. When she finally gets two lines on her pregnancy test, she'll jump and full body hug you, crying about how happy she is after trying so hard. Everything is going great for a few months. Pippa is glowing and her VTuber activities are working out and her belly is quite small on her toned body. Now imagine in a few months, Pippa has... <laughs> I'll call it there. You know, the ISP, the ISP I think was, was fucking up. I think that was a sign to, yeah. Oh, we'll move on to the next one. Thank you! Pippa, what is happening? Mental illness. Mental illness. <laughs> okay. Mm, this one... This one's an image. Finish it? No, I'm good. 
You're pointless. 39 buried, zero found. Or should I do more cutie voice? Should I do... Should I do more cutie voice? Rot roll? Yeah? Try to do an anime voice? That Brony beats a thing on 164. B17. Bomber. <laughs> You're pointless. 39 buried. Zero found. Or something like that? There you go. Alright. You are a VA? Do not ever call me that. That is that is the worst slur you could post in this chat. Uh, this is from Liker. I want to go with Leah to Whole Foods. Leave her. Then have the lady at the front desk go on the intercom and say, Leah? Is there a Leah here? Your cute older brother is looking for you. Then she'll come to the front and smile when she sees me. It's kind of cute. VA... Stop! Jesus Christ. Change the channel to VA Pipkin Pippa. What do, what do most VAs put in their thing? I thought there was like a... Like Vocaloid producers will put like a... Like a hyphen and a P in their name. I think most VAs just put VA in their name. Yeah, Pipkin VA. Yeah, no no, thank you. No thank you. I'm... I'm VTuber. Um... Oh god. Oh god. Hold on, let me put on some... Hold on. I gotta put on some fitting music for this one. Here we go. Nani, the fuck did you just... <sighs> <sighs> this is from just some dude, by the way. Nani, the fuck did you just fucking email so about Watashi, you chisai bitch desk, huh? Watashi will have all the time know that Watashi graduated top of my class in Nihongo 3! And Watashi has been involved in Yuro Yurona Nihongo tutorial session, tutoring sessions! And Watashi have over 10 Q perfect test scores! Watashi am trained in kanji! And Watashi is the top letter writer in all of Southern California! And it's our nothing to Watashi, but just another weeaboo! Watashi will Kurosu Anita the fuck out of you with uh, vocabulary the likes of which has never been Mimasu's before on this continent! Mark Watishino word, fucking words! Anata thinks Anata can get away with the Hanashan, uh, Han Hanashiba sing Red Kuso to Watashi over there! The internet to Omo, Omo again, fucker! As we, Hanashiba, Watashi am contacting Watashi no secret to Neto of Otakus across the USA! And Anata no IP is being tracked right now, so you better... Junbishimasu for the... Aim! Ame Uchi Mushi! The Ame that. <laughs> the Ame that Kurosu's the pathetic Chisai thing Anata calls Anata no life! You're a fucking Shinimashita! Akachan! That was harder than I expected. What is this? Uh. Weeaboo Navy Seals. Dumbles and Dillars. Woman, the cyst! Let's see, play the losing of the 249. You're not just a VA, you're a Reddit mod too. No! Tell them your $10. I can't believe you read that Pippa fanfic with so much ease. You really are built different. Now, who submitted that? Just want to talk, promise. Is a, is a copy pasta. Do buy a thing with $5. Um. This is how Filipinos talk. Is that true? I'll have to ask Yancha. Can I do anything? Dillers chat reflects the streamer. See, yes, I'm Dillers. Thanks, I'm offing myself now. You're welcome. It's a long no, ignore if you want. Have a good day, Boonie. This is from this Lars. This wants me to sign in. Oh wait, no. Let's see. I can follow us and you become a big big This is from this Lars. Witch in the north, lost in the serene snow. This is pretty long, so I'm not gonna read all of it. I'll read like uh, uh two paragraphs. The crackling embers. <laughs> this is fucking music. The crackling embers and snapping of timber. The smell. <laughs> I can't. I can't with the no copyright sounds. Uh, fucking. 
tutorial music? Hold on. This one's still kind of bad, but this is fine. The crackling embers and snapping of timber, the smell of the freezing air and rusting iron, the enveloping warmth of a thick coat, boots and gloves. Everything was heavy though, the silence outside the sound of fire, the wetness on the coat and the gloves, and the smell that seemed to come from everywhere. Then, finally, vision. It was wrong. So wrong. What was it? Red. Dark red. Blood red. Everything was doused. Tinged, seeping with the deep crimson red of blood. My vision engulfed by a soft glowing crimson red all along the edges. Then I finally felt it. The ground. My boots finally clicked down onto a metal platform and that glowing red light disappeared. At once I knew something terrible had happened. I'd lost control or something took control. Then I dropped to my knees and I felt sick. I lost it. Whatever had been in my stomach had spilled uncontrollably onto the platform and off the edge. The burning sensation continued for far longer than I felt it should, but it was almost like my body was trying to excise something from itself. Yeah, this is a bit long, I'll call it there. This is from Dolores. Thank you, thank you. Uh, this is from... Dingle McPringle, and this is also fucking long, so... I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'll finish this one either. You have no idea. Even more. Teaching about mental disorders, ironically. Fats McGee and his retard three walk in out of the blue and sit in desks. Uh, what are you doing? Retard looks at me. Starts emitting this horrible screech gurgle noise. My face when. The noise continues. Starts preparing to evacuate class. Fats McGee suddenly lowers his head. Vomits all over the fucking desk. All over the floor. Then there are undigested chunks of hot dog floating around in his stomach acid. The other three tardlets that followed Fats McGee start laughing and running around the room. I go to get the tard guard. Tard guard have gone outside to let the retards flail. I mean, play kickball on the baseball field. Uh, there's three of them in my room. Oh, will you bring them up here? No, come get them. Lead tard guard down to classroom. Tard guard rounds up Fats McGee and the retard three. Walks out. Doesn't do anything about the vomit desk. Have to teach outside all day because of the fucking smell. This one. Oh my god. I remember this. Uh, very well, this is the first time I met four men that changed my life. This is the first time I met Fats McGee and his retard three. First year teaching. B teaching freshman history in the cafeteria due to the size of the class. Fats McGee and his retard three walk in. Push past me, go to vending machine. Turn around to bitch them out. See, they're retarded. Fats McGee look, locks eyes with me. I am suddenly very, very aware of just how large and ape-like Fats McGee is. In those eyes, I see no desire except that to inflict violence. Fats McGee gets his arm stuck in vending machine, trying to reach up to pull chips out. Suddenly, a lot less intimidated. Fats McGee starts screaming and flailing. Twists his arm bad simply stare. Tard guard comes in, start trying to free him. The retard three are flailing around, crying. My entire class has stopped to watch the chaos. One of the retard three starts blaming me in his sputtering retard tone. What? Fats McGee wets himself, lies there in a puddle of urine crying. Arm in the vending machine. Firefighters had to come and cut the vending machine to shit and to shit to free him. Thus begins a legend of unstoppable Tard. His eyes lock with mine one final time as they lead him away. I see in those eyes smoldering rage. This job is going to suck. The Tales of Fats McGee and the Retard 3 Part 3 Six months after the first incident. Sitting in classroom, working on some school stuff. At this point, I'm trying to get my masters. Here running in hall. Music, what is fine? Glance up. Fats McGee and his retard three are running down the hall, bursting into classrooms and waving to teachers that actually like them. Star stares as they burst into my classroom. One waves, don't wave back. Please go, you're disturbing my classroom. Tard walks in, stares, I stare back. 
lets out the same high-pitched gurgle noise, a noise I'd come to call the Song of the Tard. Starts trying to take the pile of essays I'm grading. What the fuck? Stop. Tard guard walks in. Oh, there you are. Oh, there you... Oh, there you... Oh. This Tard guard manages to lose her tards. Oh, this Tard guard managed to lose her tards. Cough slightly. What? They can't help it. I personally don't agree they can't help it because I have a special education family member who doesn't act like that. Please leave. Bitch mode 3000 engaged! I get bitched at! Go to the principal office with Tard Guard! He got all uppity because my special ed student entered his classroom! He must hate special ed! Why weren't they with you? The dumb bitch goes quiet. She gets fired two weeks later. My face when... And it's David Tennant smiling. Fats McGee and his Retard 3 Part 3, Revenge of the Shits. Cramming my final exam in childhood education to get my master's. Class is taking notes while I press shit on PowerPoint, barely paying any attention. Suddenly hear a girl in my classroom scream. Stand up, expecting someone to have a knife because I teach in one of the shittiest schools in the nation. Fats McGee and his Retard 3 have walked in and started screaming retard speech at this girl, trying to steal her orange Fanta. I've had just about enough of this fucking shit. Grab Fats McGee by his chub arm. Fats starts screaming and struggling. His buddies start crying. Don't even care. Drag Fats McGee back to the Tard Cage, aka Thunderdome. Throw open door during quiet time. Scream at Tard Guard. Second time this semester and after one of you have been fired because of it. Learn to do your job. Shove Fats in. Friends follow. Walk back to classroom. But not before saying that Fats had royally shit himself. Bad enough that it doesn't even look like a stain. It looks like shit is actually dribbling from the back of his pants. Laugh all the way back to my classroom. Slam door. Let student watch Man vs. Wild for the rest of the class. Hand sanitize so much the rest of the day I start taking skin off. Don't even give a fuck. Take a sip. Fats McGee and his Retard 3 Part 4. The field is alive with the sound of Tard Rage. Fats must be a sophomore about this point. I have my master's and plan on working on my doctorate soon. I've become the baseball coach because the previous one was arrested for diddling the pickle of students. Lead students towards field for fourth block, which is practice strength and conditioning. Tards are on field. Calmly ask Tard Guard if they can wrap it up since the Tards only have the field for third block. Tard Guard, a hot one that I actually like, starts rounding them up, doing her job. Fats McGee decides to continue what will be war until he graduates. Fats looks at me. Starts running away from Tard Guard. Tard Guard begins pursuit. Fats runs up the bleachers. He gets to the top and hurls his blue jeans at the Tard Guard. The Tard Guard is pegged and is now wrapped in shit-covered blue jeans. Fats is showing immense stamina, capable of running while creating a massive fucking trail. He spins every time Guard gets close, becoming a literal whirlwind of shit. Tard points at me, finally stops running. <laughs> My face when? We practiced in the gym that day. The Tales of Fats McGee and his Retard 3 Part 5. Field Day. Later the same year as the baseball field incident, it's homecoming day, which means we don't do shit. And there are various activities for the kids. Sitting on bleachers, studying because I'm a fucking nerd. You're clanking. Look up. Oh fucking Christ. Here comes Fats McGee and his retard three. Fats tries to do the cool slide and the bullies doing movies. Oh, the movie bleh, the bullies doing movies. And ends up slamming into me. The stink. He smells like four day old boiled cabbage that has been left out in the sun and marinated in piss and horse jizz. His retard three sit in front of me, facing me. Female friend passes by, is clearly pleased with my friendliness towards the tards. Choose to accept the brownie points, but hope in my heart that the look of terror on my face betrays the idea I'm being friendly. The three are still staring. One is drooling, and it's starting to pool on my book. Uh, can you stop that? Nothing. Nothing. is screeching in my ear. Life starts flashing before my eyes. Baseball player walks up. 
starts making loud noises, telling the retards to go the fuck away. I become best friends with a player of mine, Ray. He'll be important later. Begin plotting my revenge. Notice that there's shit stains on the bleachers next to me, and the book I was studying is ruined. Move to a new bleacher. Resume revenge plot. Why the siren? Because it, it said screech. I'm thinking of a sip. <laughs> the tale of Fats McGee and his retard Ray part six. In exchange of blows, this honor goes to Ray more than anything. If you're out there, man, this was fucking glorious. Second semester of Fats sophomore year. There have been many minor events between part 5 and part 6, but nothing that wouldn't be much more than a repeat. I was dealing with Fats McGee shit for about two and a half years now. Uh, me and Ray, who is a senior, have become steadfast allies against the Tard Menace. I discovered that I'm going to have to cancel practice the day before a big game because of a disco-themed prom for the Tard Empire. I begin plotting with Ray. Ray finds Fats' friend alone at some point. He gives Fat's friends $15 to, in the middle of prom, whip his dick out and start rubbing Fats with it. Ray convinces me to go to prom where he's being a peer buddy and telling me that it'll be worth it. Sitting bored and irritated at Ray. Suddenly, one of the retard three whips out his dick and starts rubbing it against Fats. Fats panics and starts screeching. Tard guard is otherwise occupied. Oh my god, Ray, you didn't. Oh my god, I totally did, coach. Suddenly Fats goes into tur in ah. Suddenly Fats goes into rage mode, final form. Fats whips out his own chode like tard penis and starts dueling his friend, screaming in tard rage. The tard friend has no idea. Fats suddenly grabs his tard friend and hurls him into a big plastic pillar they set up for pictures. The pillar falls, nearly crushing the tard guard. Part six, part two is coming in just a moment. All hell breaks loose. Fats has removed his pants completely and is waving his dick around, pissing on everything. The retard three have all started cock dueling. I'm staring, awestruck at what Ray has wrought. Fats looks to me. Oh fucking Jesus, the end is here. Fats slams into me at full retard speed and starts screaming in my face. Ray pulls him off but gets in trouble later for attacking the kid because of ultimate mother bitch mode. I stand, covered in tard urine and shit. I will shower forever when I get home. I think, at that point, Fats realized how bad he fucked up, because he just started crying. Thus, the beginning of the end had arrived. I'm just here for the music, understandable. Fats McGee and his retard three, part seven, end of the beginning of the end. Are you using AI for this? No, I'm reading, I'm reading this myself. Or unless, like, do you mean the poster generated? Because no, this is, this is more of a... Long series of green decks. Fuck, what was that? Part 7! I was forced to remove Ray from the team because of the prom incident, but we're still fast friends even after he graduates. I'm entering my third year of teaching in Fat's junior year. It's taken all summer, but I finally figured out my plan. I can't get damaged in school, or they'd find a way to blame me or the school. I have to find a way to get Fats to damage me outside of school. I know for a fact Fats is turning 18 soon because he was held back a year in middle school, so I could get him to try- I could get him tried as an adult. I use a cookie to befriend one of his retard three, and now have a spy in the base. I learned that Fats' birthday is March 31st, the second semester of his junior year. Excellent. While well, I plan, I continue being a good teacher, and I'm close to getting my PhD. One day, after moving a after moving to a new classroom, Fats begins to fade from my mind because I'm not so close to him. Part seven, part two, incoming. The tales of Fats McGee and his retard three, part seven, oh, part eight, a farewell to arms, part one. Finally, March rolls around. April first comes. It is time. I start learning Fats' pattern, what he does for fun. It turns out Fat is an avid fan of movies and loves going to the cinema. Finally, I use my spy to learn when Fats is going to be in a movie. I drive to the theater and spot Fats in line. It's time! I prepare myself before walking towards the movie. I won't let him see me until we're in the concession line. Just my luck, they made fresh popcorn and he had a bucket. This is going to really f This is going to hurt really fucking bad, but it'll be worth it. Fat. Fat 
turns around. Mouth. Mouth. Found you, fuck nugget. Fats starts screaming. Sing me to my sleep, B. Incoming final boss battle. The final story of Fats McGee and his retard 3. Stare down at Fats. Fats starts freaking the fuck out and shaking. Mother turns towards me. Eyes widen as she recognizes me. Just grin. Fats suddenly throws the steaming popcorn at me and lunges on me. I'm getting wheeled on by a retard. Security suddenly comes and yanks him off me. Spot one security guard and looks familiar. Holy shit, it's Ray. Police are called because I'm bleeding. The final story of Fats and his retard three. I press charges. His mother rages and says I provoked him. Teachers from school testify that Fats has always been incredibly aggressive and rage-filled. Every incident he ever caused is brought into it. Fats is found guilty as an adult of fourth degree assault and is given nine months in jail plus a $5,000 fine. I walk out of the courthouse, stare up at the clouds. It is finished. No matter what happens, no matter how old I get, I'll never forget Fats McGee and his retard three. And if you ever plan on tarting it up in my school, just remember who stands between you and chaos, you sniveling little down shit. And thus ends the tale of Fats McGee. You shouldn't have done that, Anon! You shouldn't, you shouldn't have done that! I don't condone that! I don't condone- I, I don't condone that! Fuck if it wasn't funny though. Nice BGM. BGM is being very annoying tonight. Upbeat. What, 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 what do we put on Ace Combat OST? How about that? Ace Combat Greatest Songs. This surely will not give me copyright stuff. Hopefully. Can't wait for the movie adaptation. Yeah. Heroic Night Golding. Come big pee Day thing. Come big pee Feel free thing. With the five dollars. Pure poetry. Nezzy thing. With the eight nineteen. Pippa's narrating voice for this is perfect. Lizard Insurance. Thank you for the two dollars. Would Pippa diddle our pickle? No. Nicholas Heredia, thank you for the $2. CJ Odell, thank you for $2. Pippa is the best rabbit. American Neat, thank you for $5. Can't catch the strings, it's a mountain about. Just wanna say Pippa I love! Don't forget to do your piss ups, chat. That's five push ups every time you take a piss. Get off your lazy ass and do it. You too, yeah, but it's just five and you can do them on your knees. Piss ups. <laughs> Can't you anything, Dolores? Chat reflects the streamer. CS, yes, thank you for $2. Next, I'm offing myself now. Spider Do, thank you for $5. Mute stream. In the bathroom? Maybe you should do it outside of the bathroom. Probably outside of the bathroom. Who was that from again? That was from Dingle McPringle. Easy, just don't piss. True! Ah, uh, that's another version of the fucking my sister green po- uh, green text. Fackle car, you think I'm big peep me? Um. Um, um, um. I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna read weird ones about my coworkers. I don't want to make them uncomfortable. Uh, this is from Jacob Anderson. This is a YouTube video. I'm not. I'm not playing a YouTube video. Uh, this submission doesn't have a name, and it says, "Your mom." Very nice. Thank you. Sorry, I could only find this on iFunny. This is from Red Goliath. You really don't. T has autistic girlfriend. She won't stop with her fuck... Wait. She won't stop with her stupid fucking stuffed animals. I was fucking her on the bed last night like a machine and then went back to my room. We can't sleep in the same room because she likes a nightlight and her toys all over the fucking bed. So I was just like, screw it, and bought a sofa bed for the den so I could get some fucking normal sleep. And she tells me to come back and give Mr. Waffles a kiss. Mr. Waffles is her giant stuffed hamster. I was drained of all my cum and stamina and just wanted to get some fucking sleep, so I said no. Then she starts screeching, Come back and give Mr. Waffles a hug! Give him a hug! He can't sleep without a hug! And jumping up and down on the bed, naked with my cum dripping out of her stupid fucking autistic pussy. Not gonna lie though, her big stupid tits basically make the entire thing worth it considering how much I fucking love massive hangers. Thank you, Red Goliath. Very cool. 
Uh, this is from a fairy tale fan. I can't take this anymore. I fucking need and cannot stress this enough. I need Ezra Scarlet from the hit anime fairy tale to beat me mercilessly. I need her to pick me up by the throat and fling me into a wall hard. I need her to punch my ribs so hard I puke up tiny bone fragments and blood. I need to be stepped on by her and made to be her subservient boy toy punching bag. I need to be killed by Ezra Scarlet from the hit anime fairy tale. I need to be raped by Ezra Scarlet from the hit anime fairy tale. I need to be raped to literal death by Ezra Scarlet from the hit anime fairy tale. This unironically causes me great distress in my life. I don't go outside because if I see a girl that resembles Ezra Scarlet from the hit anime fairy tale, I will beg her to murder me. If I see a girl that resembles Wendy, I'll rape her on the spot. If only Red Hood escorts didn't come preloaded with full sleeve and thigh tattoos, I would have already had one wear bikini armor and hospitalize me. I need to have sex with and then die by Ezra Scarlet from the hit anime fairy tale. Uh, thank you, fairy tale fan. Very cool. Got the fiend. Got the fiend. <laughs> oh, okay. Indeed, me and then come big pee pee. Crap! I just realized my window's open. All right. This is from some guy. How do I love thee? Sonnet 43 from Elizabeth Barrett Browning. I'm gonna have to open another soda. This is actually a Rule 34 stream, kind of. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to death. Oh, fuck. I wanna start over. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height. My soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the ends of being an ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's. Most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use. In my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose. With my lost saints, I love thee with the breath. Smiles, tears of all my life, and if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Hopefully the ISP didn't cut that one out. How do I love Pippa? Let me pip the ways. This is a love letter. It's how do I love thee, Sonnet 43. It rhymes. Um... Somebody linked My Immortal? If you... What the... What the fuck is... Thank you for the link to the bbc.com forward slash... I'll let chat imagine. Um... I'm not gonna read any of this. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna... I'm good. I'm good. Oh, man. I'm good. Okay. Thank you, Maximus. I can't read the first part of your name. Um... I fucking hate Olaf. This was sent by Mick Skittles. Read? No. I'm gonna read the Olaf one. I fucking hate Olaf. God, I fucking hate Olaf the snowman so fucking much. Holy shit! Holy shit! Every frame he's in, every scene, every gif, every JPEG, he's got this painfully vacant, stupid as shit, fuck ass look on his stupid, lumpy face. Absolutely no part of his ugly as sin piece of shit character design is endearing. His stupid fucking legs? Who the hell makes a snowman with legs? His dumb, flaily fucking twig arms? His shitty, lumpy bastard head? The 3,000% unnecessary, dumbass, shitass fucking snow buck tooth that no snowman has ever fucking had in the history of God's green fucking earth? God, I fucking hate him. I hate him so much. So fucking much. Every time I see a stuffed toy of Olaf or an Olaf gif or a shitty goddamn commercial, it ignites my primal rage response and I'm overcome by the need to punch this shitty little homunculus into the fucking sun. Brr. 
Burr, burr. I'm Olaf the fuck shit stone fucker. I like warm hugs. Fuck you. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You look like Tomator summoned a Patronus. You dumb fucking twig hair makes your whole shitty head look like a hairy skin tag. I hate your dumb fucking lumpy carrot nose and your stupid empty googly eyes and your over the top goopy ass upbeat asshole personality. Any scene he sat in, it invokes all the wrath and fury of a spoiled child having a meltdown over a chocolate bar in a Walmart checkout line. And I know it's irrational. That's the worst part. I know he's just a shitty fucking side character in a stupid fucking children's movie. I know it doesn't matter. I know I shouldn't care. But that's part of the problem. The part where no matter the might and fury of my hatred, the locus of my homicidal intent is altogether inconsequential. I find myself laying awake in the dark in the early hours of the morning consumed by the spirit of wrath itself. All the force and might of a flaming hurricane directed at a bottle of piss in a ditch by the highway. The absurdity of it all burns me to my core. What better things could this energy be directed towards? And yet my disdain for this stupid, useless, insubstantial failure of endearing character design utterly eclipses the intrigue of all other pursuits. I hate him. I hate him on a level of my mind reserved for the worst of the world's array of sinners. And I can't even begin to justify it. Shit Snake the Snow Dick is, for all intents and purposes, the animated corpse of all of humanity's saturine pretenses. Every condescending, passive-aggressive statement of meaningless, upper-middle-class suburban drama distilled into a single, hateable form. The fucking... Fuck, I have no words! There is no cuss or epithet in any language that can encapsulate the height of the emotion I am experiencing. God, I hate him so much. I hate him so, so fucking much. I want to light his ugly little dumpster body on fire. I want to graphically beat him to death with his own stupid fucking nose. I want to punch him to death. You know that weird feeling you get when you see a picture of something so cute you find yourself overcome with the bizarre, inexplicable urge to squeeze it? It's exactly like that. Instead of, except instead of cuteness, it's disgust. The wordless knowledge that his existence as a fictional work is evidence of all the failures of mankind. I find myself possessed by the will of a holy angel gone rogue with the belief that God has made a mistake and I alone must correct it. This is the trial of which, of by which Samael himself fell from grace. This wild, meaningless rage, a thousand blades of shining steel cast with inhuman force in the direction of a plastic grocery bag floating on a breeze. What horrors must I have committed in the past life to be plagued by this torment now? I must unmake this fictional snowman. Uh, thank you, very cool, McSkittles. He is a bad character. I don't like Olaf. I'm gonna turn the thing off. Yeah, I don't like Olaf. I think I think Olaf is a stupid character and he's annoying and I don't I don't quite have this much rage storm. But I don't I don't like Olaf. <coughs> oh chat! It's time for another can of Shody Pop. Oh, I love the smell. I love the smell of coke. What's on tap this time? It's just more Coca-Cola. <laughs> it's just more Coca-Cola. Okay. Alright. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna read the Unabomber's Manifesto. It's, um, it's 35,000 words, but thank you. Thank you, penis woman. Although this would be an interesting song to read it to. Yeah. Um. Be me. Working at Burger King. I add an extra chicken nugget to bags when they're for a kid's meal. Imagine the kid feeling so lucky he got an extra nugget. He wasn't actually lucky though, as I did that deliberately. My devilish nature cannot be contained. <laughs> Burger King foot lettuce. I remember having, having that emotional high as a child when I got five chicken nuggies instead of four chicken nuggies. That shit feels good. 
Lord Brahma, I think, but Lord, you give such an impassioned reading of copy pastas. Can you really say you couldn't be a voice actor? I could not be. I love thinking about the fine Lawrence Pippa still having the stamina to go through all of this eye cancer proof she's the strongest VTuber. Mr. It's clobbering timing. When Lawrence thinks Pippa, I forgot that I can still feel cringe. You're welcome. Sebastian Mon Rolling. Dolores, hi Pippa, she just got done with work. How's the stream? Pretty good. Fashion sauce, thank you, Dolores. Oh look, I've been impaled. Dylan G, then come big pee Pat, thank you for the five gift peepees. In skiing, the $10, you promised Jim to send your pits at 200k. No, I did not. I did not. Um. You're supposed to get four. Yeah, in in the kids' chicken nuggy. The kids' chicken nuggy? It's a four piece. It's a four piece. Uh. I did not make that promise. Oh god, this is from Aleph Bet. One day, while Andy was masturbating, Woody got wood. He could no longer help himself. He watched as Andy stroked his juicy, kawaii cock. He approached Andy, which startled him and made him pee everywhere on the floor. And on Woody, too. Being drenched in his urine made him harder than ever. Woody. Andy Senpai, I'm alive and I want to be inside of you. Andy. Oh, Woody Chun. I always knew you were alive. I want to stuff you up as. I want to stuff you up my kawaii ass. Woody grabbed a bunch of flavored lube and rubbed it all over his head. Woody. Oh my! It's cherry flavored lube! Cherry is my favorite! Woody then stuffed his head into Andy's tight ass. The other toys around the room watched intently as Woody shoved his head back and forth into Andy's nice ass, continuously making a squishy wet noise. The other toys also became aroused, and they all gathered around Woody and Andy and started to urinate all over them. And then they started to masturbate. Andy. Oh my goodness, Woody-chan. You are churning my insides up so well. Your nose is stimulating my prostate. Oh yes! All the other toys became so aroused. Oh wait. All the other toys became so aroused by this that they could not help themselves anymore. They pushed Woody completely inside, and they all went inside. All of them wanted to be inside Andy's nice round ass. <laughs> Andy. No, wait, guys! My ass can't hold this much! I'm getting so full! All the toys went inside of poor squirming Andy, and pretty much, he was beyond full and died from having his insides completely damaged. The mother came inside and found Andy. Dead, with a huge ass hemorrhage on his anus, with a huge belly full of toys. Uh, thank you, Elfbet. I remember reading a really fucked up, uh, short story. Have I talked about this before? This is a really fucked up short story. That was about a Barbie doll? It was about a Barbie doll that came to life, and it was... This, the main character's sister's Barbie doll. And he starts like... Doing sexual things to the Barbie doll. I think it was called like Real Girl or something. And it was actually like really well written. Which was just fucking baffling. X Singer Deluxe Pippa, you are a funny rabbit. Thank you. Does this sound familiar? I don't remember the name. If anybody remembers the name, that's my thing for twenty dollars, please stop tainting my childhood. No. Do you guys do you guys does anyone know what I'm talking about? It got passed around a little bit for a while. I've seen fanfics worse than this. Yeah. Read on stream. I think it was kind of long. Didn't Ordinary Things do a video on it? Did he? Maybe that's where I remember it from. Ordinary Things... Barmy? I don't know. No. Ransom, thinking with the $20? Sounds like a fanfic. It was by like an actual publisher. A real doll by A.M. Holmes. A real doll. A. M. Holmes. Yeah, I think this is it! Yeah, I recognize the page! Maybe? I think. Yeah, 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 this is it, this is it. I'm not reading it, though. I'm not gonna read it. Pippin doll. No, I'm good. That one's long. Yeah, it's kinda long. It's like Ace Combat Link. But if you want to look it up yourself, it's a real doll by A.M. Holmes. 
We were spared. You were spared. Huh? Toku Cowling, I'm moving just so you know you don't have to mask your fanfics? What? What? As viewer submissions, we'd still support you? No, 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 no. We're not doing this. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. These are not mine. These are not mine, chat. Okay. Oh, fuck. I alt tabbed and it ruined everything. God fucking damn it. Um? This is, a, this is a face connect meme. I'm not gonna read it out loud. But thank you, Amanda, the neurodivergent, for the submission. This is a Spanish tongue twister? From the guy whose name you always pronounce wrong every time. Do your Spanish reps, rabbit. I don't want to. Let me, let me take this to Deep L real quick. Hold on. No. He's trying to get me to download shit. It rains all day. It rains incessantly. Rain stops wetting so we can play. Okay, how do you... How do you say this? Like, how do you... How do you pronounce this? Hold on. Llueve todo el día, llueve sin cesar. Lluvia deja de mojar para poder jugar. What? You don't? Very carefully? Llueve todo el día, llueve sin cesar. Lluvia deja de mojar para poder jugar. Llueve todo el día... Llueve sin cesar? Llueve... Deja de mojar para poder jugar? What? Did I do it? Did I, did I do it? See? Okay. <laughs> Very nice, thank you. Kinda. Alright, well... Try pronouncing... No, I'm good. No, I'm good. This is kind of long. Um, when you drive for a new i when the drive for a new iPhone is too great, you get fired. What the fuck? I have one thousand notifications on Reddit. Holy shit! How? How is that even possible? Rexing in front of Lawrence. I'm so familiar with WGW because I played SS13, where it was common for people to read it over the radio until a mob found them and beat them to death. Oh, okay. Diego G and Johnny, they can be the ransom, they can give us a twenty dollar reduce. Uh Mount Lewis D thing for Dolores, people give us the name of whoever sent in that Toy Story fanfic. I just want to talk. Redditor! Oh, is it cause I have the subreddit? Maybe that's what hold on, I'm gonna click on him, I'm curious. Username mention? AMA post reply. Comment reply. Comment reply. Post reply. They're all like replies. Uh, a lot of... A lot of crisis alerts? Hey there! A concern... Or, hi there! A concerned Redditor reached out to us about you. When you're in the middle of something painful, it may feel like you don't have a lot of options, but whatever you're going through, you deserve help and there are people who are here to help you. Text chat to crisis line at 741 741. Okay then. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. Uh, hmm. It's kind of long. Kill dear executive assistant breaks iPhone in her quest again. I like is a woman. I'm going to start on this and if it's not if it's not Interesting, I'm just gonna click off, because it's kinda long. But I'm gonna give it a shot. It has 28k updates. I work as an executive support technician for a large company. I have a team of 8 people under me, and we support high-ranking executives and their administrative assistants. Because of the nature of our work, we have the ability to get things done. But the standard help desk cannot. We can force upgrades that would otherwise be denied, get things expedited, skip the normal procedures and talk directly with the people who fix issues. While we are executive support, we are still... There are still levels. When the CEO in town... Fuck. My leg is hurting. Sorry. I'm trying to... Catching a bit. Ah! Ah! 
I sat with my leg too scrunched up. And that triggers my leg pain. Uh, we, uh, where are they? When the CEO is in town, one of us is camped outside of wherever he might be in case there is any sort of issue. For lower people, we make sure things get done as quick as possible, but it's not even a drop. Oh, it's not a drop every si But it's not a drop everything situation. As we prepped for the release of the new iPhones, we braced for the flood of I NEED THIS that inevitably happens. We slot in orders immediately for the top of the pyramid, guys, and then work our way down. Replacing, or sometimes having to tell them that they have to wait because the device they have is too new to warrant replacing. So on Monday, the EA of a lower end exec puts in a request to get both herself and the exec new 250GB iPhone Xs. The exec has put in... The exec was put on the approval list, with a wait, but the EA was denied. She had just been issued an iPhone 7 a few months ago, and began to raise hell about how I have to support him, so I need to have the exact same phone, etc, etc. Still denied. On Tuesday, I get a ticket from the EA. iPhone will not turn on, require replacement, with attached ticket for iPhone X request. I send one of my drones out to investigate, and I immediately get a text saying we have to get out there. I get out there, and the phone iPhone is wet. Not just wet, but dripping wet. Like, just pulled out of a glass of water wet with a screen that could only be called heavily cracked. The EA states, I was just using it and it fell into my water bottle. So we take the iPhone back to our area and I've called my manager over and we explain it's obvious what has happened. We've toweled it off and when we turn it over, water drizzles out of the cracked screen. Well, as luck would have it, we have spares, so I pluck a nice 64 gig rose gold iPhone 6S that was returned when the previous owner departed the company. I call and have the sim reprovisioned. I reassign the phone in AirWatch and have... And I have the phone returned to the EA. Ten minutes later, said EA is at our door, ranting, screaming, saying that she can't work like this. She needs a new phone. And if we don't give her a new one, Executive will make us give her one. I step in and tell her a permanent replacement is just beginning the process. We have had to issue you this phone as a loaner so you can continue working until a permanent replacement is sourced. Q Wednesday, the approval process has come back denied for her replacement. The loaner phone is now her permanent phone. This info is relayed to the EA, who is fuming. Lots of, EXECUTIVE WILL HEAR ABOUT THIS! And statements of, I CAN'T BELIEVE THIS IS HAPPENING TO ME! HOW WILL I WORK? This is all over a phone. Wednesday afternoon, some EA, new ticket, iPhone broken, need replacement. I head out myself to see the issue. And the phone looks like it was dragged behind a semi-truck for 100 miles. The screen is shattered, a big chunk missing out the top near the camera. Big dents in the back. I calmly ask, what happened? This phone was perfectly... Oh, this, this phone was perfect this morning? The reply. Well, since you gave me an old phone, my keys didn't fit and it slipped out of my hands and fell down the stairs. Well, okay, you could tell me when and what stairwell this happened. She does. And I take the mangled phone. I grab my manager and we head off to the security office. We pull the tapes. On the video, we see the EA walking up the stairwell, concrete stairs, metal handrail, your typical big building, non-public stairwell. She reaches, to the, she reaches the top and proceeds to fling the phone, like one would skip a stone, down from the sixth floor, like the mid-floor landing to where it lands. She steps on it and then kicks it down to the fifth floor. It bangs off the metal fire door and she picks it up, examines it, and then tosses it down the stairs to, towards the fourth floor. Bouncing off a few steps before landing on the mid-landing between 5 and 4. She picks the device up and pries a large section of something off the phone. We suspect this was the chunk missing by the camera, and then heads back up the stairs, running the phones against the cinder block walls as she climbs. So we grab a copy of the video, we head straight to HR, we sit with the personal personnel director. We show her the video, we show her the two damaged iPhones, we show her the tickets. I relay the abuse thrown to myself in my text about how she demands an iPhone X and has taken to destroying company property to get it. Termination follows. However, the user has gone home for the day. Her accounts are disabled. Her security badges, oh, her security badge flagged. 7:30 a.m. The EA attempts to get into the building and her badge does not work, so she has to walk to the security office. The security officer takes the badge and walks her to HR. 8 a.m., the security officer and two members of the HR are escorting the EA out of the building. She's alternating between yelling and crying, demanding that the executive be called and that she's being framed. As she's brought through the main foyer, I'm on the second floor balcony that overlooks the entrance. She looks up at me, curses me, and is gone. Both phones, her laptop, and other equipment have been placed with the legal team as a precaution. No 
company policy when there is a messy separation. Maybe I'll buy my team some lunch for today. Seems like the right thing to do. I mean, what did she think? What, what, what did she think was gonna happen? What did she... What did she think was gonna happen? Rexing, for those... I'm so familiar with WGW because I play... Oh, I read that. Uh, big oof thing, come big pee, pee She thought she was gonna get an iPhone X, obviously. There's not, like, a big difference between the phones, right? Like, all the iPhones I've released, they're basically the same, aren't they? So why... Well, I guess because it's the new thing. Like, no, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta have it because it's new. Bingo, bingo, tango, bingo, bingo. That's the pippa. You asked the fish, right? He okayed this. Yes. Yeah. About that. Uh, that's just a meme. That's a YouTube video. Um. Oh god, this one's this one's really long. This is the Guptill89 presents top ten hottest Sonic female Sonic characters. Oh god. Hey, yeah, don't ask permission, ask forgiveness. Sonic the Hedgehog, one of the greatest and most attractive characters ever thought up. He can run around at the sea at sound speed, take out enemies in a flash, and best of all, he's blue colored and knows how to handle the females. Speaking of females, the Sonic Universe might also be classified as Hot Chick Heaven! Because there's such a mess of very beautiful and tough women that will make you love the franchise even more. And since Valentine's Day is around the corner, I've been inspired to make a top 10 list of the most beautiful female Sonic characters. Grab yourself a snack and glass of orange juice and try not to reach the screen because here we go! Number 10 Try this question off for size! Who chases and hugs Sonic all the time and wields a powerful hammer? Why, it's Amy Rose, of course! Through more- Though more of a cutie than a hottie, you can't deny the fact that she's still attractive. Two things that make her attractive are the fact that she wears a dress. And when have you ever seen three big, very smooth arcs of her hair sticking out of a person's forehead? I haven't! So once again, Amy Rose is lovely. That is until she goes berserk and starts hitting stuff with her hammer! Who's at number 9? It's this alien plant girl from a distant planet, Cosmo from Sonic X. She arrived on the character's planet to deliver a message saying that the galaxy was under attack by a force called the Metarex. She doesn't do much except tell people to stop fighting and focus on the real matter at hand. The real reason she lands at number 9 is that she becomes Miles Tails Prower Sweetheart, something Tails needed for a long while. Numero Ocho, Cream the Rabbit's mother, Vanilla. She's attractive and the size of an average human mother. What really surprises me about her is that the leader of Team Chaotix, Vector the Crocodile, falls in love with her. Kind of silly, don't you think? She's another character that doesn't do much, but in season three episode of S season, but in a season three episode of Sonic X, she helps Chris Thorndike get into a space fight, S get into space to fight the Metarex along with Sonic and friends. What's number... Oh, fuck. What number's next? Seven, of course. Wave the Swallow from Sonic Riders. People always root for the good guys, but sometimes the bad guys steal the show. Her mechanical IQ is equal to Tails. She also happens to be the smartest member of the Babylon Rogues. I wonder why she isn't the leader, like Jet the Hawk and Storm the Albatross. Her specialty is riding the airboards called Extreme Gear. With two very long and smooth feathers extending from her head to her calves and droopy eyes, Wave will rock your socks. If only we could see her take wing. I don't want to read all this. <laughs> I don't... I don't... I don't, I don't want to read all this. I don't... I'm good. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Okay, next. This is from NASA Poster. Thank you, NASA. Very cool. <laughs> NASA! Cream the rabbit. Skip, please. I did. Uh, the box ghost. Let's see what this is. Oh, God. Oh god, it's horizontal. Number one was Rouge, it is. Alright. Have sun. 
17, 115 pounds, 5'11". Doesn't lift, gay. Doesn't exercise, only reads, studies, and competes in UIL. Gets super touchy every time I try and suggest he gets fit. I love my son and I know I'm a shit bag for being disappointed. But I don't know how to tell him he's lanky without sounding like a douche. What do I do, fit? Depends, OP. Is he a gay top or bottom? Don't see how that's related, but bottom. Could probably pass for a trap with effort. Please, God, no. Curious, how exactly did you discover he was a bottom? I have a gay brother, but it literally took me asking him to find out. How do you know he's a bottom? Uh... There we go. Possibly the most artistic moment of my life. B two summers ago. Son's friend comes over to play some video games with him. Knew he was gay, but too stupid to make connection. Hanging out in the living room, watching Spurs game while son and friend are in his room. It pays to go over to the hospital because a nurse is pissed at me for misplacing her SE for an old patient. Head over to son's room to tell him I have to leave for a bit. Open door. He has friend's cock buried six inches inside of him. Both look at me in horror. I stand there, trying to think of something to say. Literally spurg out. Guess you are preparing for your prostate exams, haha! <laughs> Both of their mouths are still gaping at me. I sprint out of the house and drive off. There you go. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you went for milk and never came back. <laughs> you just drove away. You should have knocked. That'll teach you to knock. Oh my. Handled that well, to be honest. It's a true dad moment. A true dad moment. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. What the fuck? What the fuck is... Oh, my God. Oh, God. Okay, this is... There's no name attached to this one. Why do I have a ping? Oh, thank God. Okay. Um... Product review! Tenga Easy Beat Artificial Vagina. Silky. Take a sip. came in the mail on a Tuesday. Just like a real woman, it took forever to come, he thought. There's a joke you'll never be able to tell in public. As promised, it was in discreet packaging, a surprisingly small box. Within this was a plastic egg that contained the fuck sleeve. While small, it could be stretched, per the pamphlet, to accommodate any size penis. There were also hints on how to maximize sensation on the glands and the frenulum. Some artists had been paid to draw a hand in various positions, stretching this piece of silicone over a healthy-sized member. It's a living. Inside the thing's orifice was a single packet of lube, but he opted for Curel Intensive Care instead. Save the special stuff for a rainy day. Sideways anger door. She's, she's just waiting for that slack notif. I'll spare you the details. It was the first one he'd ever used, and he came almost instantly. Grudgingly pulling the device off of him and spraying it into the sink to avoid a long cleaning process. I'm gonna be sick. Just like a real woman, it makes you nut too fast, he thought. Just like a real woman, it makes you pull out. He bought the cheapest one that got good reviews. Miserly. He hadn't read the fine print that was so cheap and came with a packet of lube because it was intended for single use. At the bottom of the directions, pamphlet were the words, after pleasuring, discard, try more of our eight different textures. After about the fifth time, it began to get grippy and loose, and no longer excited him. He had one last hurrah with the single-use dedicated loop packet, which made his penis smell like almonds. He emptied his seed in it, imagined he was launching an unwanted baby into fertile young loins. He then threw it out with the trash on top of some coffee grounds. A few weeks later, he was making chicken. He often cooked for dates, but this was a special dish he only made alone. A Vaughn's family pack of 99 cents per pound chicken parts baked in Kraft barbecue sauce. His mother had always made it on his birthday, and now he would make it after a rough day at work. He 
would have been embarrassed if anyone saw. He liked people to think he was the type of person who seared locally caught fish with fresh rosemary. Then the doorbell rang. It was the Tenga Easy Beef Artificial Vagina Silky. She was crying. I'm sorry, she said. I just had a really bad date. I was in the neighborhood. I had to get away from him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I should have called, but can I come in? Sure, he said. He didn't know what else to say. He'd been drinking wine. He was not prepared for his artificial vagina to come to life and stop by for dinner. Thank you. It was raining outside. She was shivering a little. What are you making? It smells wonderful. Oh, just some, uh, just some stupid shit. Something my mom used to make. It smells wonderful. Thanks. It's not really. It's, uh, not fancy. Can I have some? He blanched for a second. He had never cooked for her, obviously. Only fucked her and rinsed her off and put her back in a drawer. He would have never even considered cooking this chicken for a guest. Certainly not a date. But so what if she thought it was stupid? Who stops by someone's house unannounced? A guy who fucks you five times and threw you out. Who cared what she thought? He served her. Then himself. She cut off a bite and blew on it. Tasted it. Oh my god! It's so good! Haha, <laughs> really? It's the best chicken I've ever had! It's just some stupid comfort food. My mom used to make it for my birthday. Well, your mother was wonderful. They ate and listened to the rain. She finished her plate and asked for more. Girls never did that. Listen, she said. I know this is imposing, but uh, can I stay here for tonight? I have a movie in my bag. I'll stay out of your hair. I took the bus to my date and it's raining and I don't want to be alone. It was out of nowhere, but he didn't really know how to say no. The movie was Andrei Rublev by Tarkovsky, an epic about medieval Russia. There were sweeping battles and ancient vistas, and they threw a horse down a flight of stairs. It was a masterpiece. He had never talked to her about movies, obviously. He hadn't known she had such wonderful taste. They fell asleep on the couch together, her back warming his chest while the rain hissed in the leaves. In the morning, she was gone. A week later, she called him. He didn't recognize the number, but picked up anyway. Hi, she said. I don't want to be weird, but I'm going to... I'm going to the desert this weekend, and I wanted to see if you'd come with me. I rented a room at this place where there's a natural hot spring. He had been living in Los Angeles for eight years and had never seen the desert. Work had wrecked him. It was Friday night. She might be crazy, but why not? In the morning, they drove out to the desert hot springs in her convertible. He watched the hills roll by, the plants and rocks change, and was excited. New birds circled the highway. New flowers grew in the ditch. He made her pull over so he could take a picture with a cactus. She had a hotel room in a little place that had a hot mineral water, catered to German tourists. They sat in the giant tub, naked as dusk fell over the desert, and a roadrunner came, came up to drink from the pool. Crickets sounded and a coyote howled. A wind blew in from the mountains and shook a wall of bamboo behind them. He was the happiest he'd ever been in his life. They stayed together for a year. He did not remove his OK Cupid profile, and he did not list himself as being in a relationship with his former artificial vagina on Facebook. He did not introduce her to his friends, but she came over three nights a week or during the day when her hair when her air conditioning broke, and they laid around watching movies and drinking wine and talking. They camped in the mountains, cataloging the national forest twenty-four different kinds of rodents. They didn't fuck anymore. He cared about her too much. You have to want to hurt somebody to fuck them. They tried a few times, and he would look her in the eyes, and it would make him laugh. Oh my god, I need a drink. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Bro had a gosling moment for his tango. <laughs> in the spring, she had a doctor's appointment. She called him after, crying. Said she needed to come over. She had cancer, she said. There were going to be treatments, but she probably wasn't going to make it. We are going to beat this, he said. You are going to beat this. No, I'm not. And I need you to do something for me. She had no one. <laughs> no family. If I get to... If 
until I get to the point where I might live. But it wouldn't be me anymore, she said. I need you to have them pull the plug. He didn't know how he would ever do it. But how could he say no? He would drive her to chemo, to radiation. She would tell him stories in the car about her childhood. Things she'd never told anybody, but had to tell someone. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be like they never happened. She had been through a lot, it turned out. Men passing her around since she was a baby. The life of a fox leaf. <laughs> <clears throat> the life of a fox leaf. I can't read it without laughing! I can't read it without laughing! Fuck! Clip it out of context, Pippa laughs about pedophilia! <clears throat> the life of being a fox leaf. The radiation burned her skin and the drugs made her throw up all the time as she started slipping away. He would sit with her under the ivy bag and hold her hand. She was slipping, but she was still her. She could still make him laugh. The drugs didn't work and she needed surgery. He was in the waiting room reading the hospital's copy of Reptile magazine for domestic reptile enthusiasts. The featured review was of the tomato frog. They may look drab when young, but don't be fooled. They explode into a vivid red-orange in adulthood, especially the somewhat larger female. And engaging in active amphibian, he wondered what it would take for the reptile to give a bad review. He moved on to the hunt for the dark phase Everglades corn snake and noticed his hands were shaking. A doctor came out. There had been a complication. One of the tumors was near an artery, and they had nicked it. She was on blood thinners and was bleeding out. She might never wake up. If she did, her brain had been deprived of oxygen. She would not be herself. I understand that her wish was not to be resuscitated. We have some papers you'll need to sign. They let him hold her hand while she died, with that stupid machine beeping like on TV. She had been sick for a long time, skinny and gray with sunken eyes and no eyebrows, and most days she could barely talk. But that wasn't how he remembered her. Driving home and trying not to break down and cry in traffic. He remembered the desert, the hot spring, kissing her in the warm water, the wind whipping the bamboo back and forth. It would hurt him forever, the way she left him. But he wouldn't trade it for the world. In conclusion, five stars. Okay. So what was the cancer and stuff an allegory for? What was- what was- What the fuck? Now I'm sad? It's a tanga, chat! It's a tanga! It's a cock slave! Randy, thank you for the five dollars. Take a channel! Oh, fuck you, thank you for the five dollars. Pippin, the old smoky pickle flavor sucked! But the banana pudding one was so good, I drank it all before I ate dinner! And then I woke up on the floor. <laughs> Oh, good! Yeah, but it had soul. It did- it did have soul. I- I imagined her as a- as an anime girl with, like, white hair and maybe, like, yellow eyes and, like, um, like, like, spider legs because it's- it's, uh, it's silky. So I was thinking, like, spider silk? That's how I imagined her. Uh, see I think with the two dollars. Yeah, but that's a good job! <laughs> Skeptical bad, I think, with the five dollars. Ah, my girl is a vegetable. She lives in the hospital. I would do anything to keep her alive. Bongo bingo tango bingo. Thank you for the two dollars. Match cool. Thanks, Pippa. Tenga is love. Tenga is life. Sideways and dollars. Legit. You should do audiobook readings. No, I should not. Welcome to diving with dollars. This Tenga story is a roller coaster. What the fuck? Silky makes me think of the chicken. Ooh, that's fair. Mamakin has has silkies. Sebastian and Athia, thing with the 214. This guy sounds like Colrus. No, he doesn't! Titi Titi, thing on Big Pee Pee. Paolo Bandini, thing for the $2. Pippa X, Henny Stream win. Maybe someday. Where's the $2 super chat? Thank you for the $5. Option? I need to lower the Streamlabs minimum. I upped it for TOS. T 
TOS. For TTS. <laughs> I don't remember thing with the $10. Do what to the rabbit? Machine thing with the twenty dollars. If it's good to say or do something, then it's even better to be criticized for having said or done it. Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Okay. All right. So what's next? Um. Bum 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 bum. We probably got time for. I don't know how many more. These vary wildly in length. See, I think are still better than your lie in April. Ouch. This is from Potato Potato. Thank you for making our night so much fun. Thank you, thank you. Um, this is from Chair. And it's a Wikipedia article about chairs. A chair is a type of seat. Typically designed for one person and consisting of one or more legs. A flat or slightly angled seat and a backrest. They may be made of wood, metal, or other synthetic materials. And may be padded or upholstered in various colors and fabrics. Chairs may... or chairs vary in design. An armchair has armrests fixed to the seat. A recliner is upholstered and features a mechanism that lowers the chair's back and raises it into place a footrest. A rocking chair has legs fixed to two long curved slats. And a wheelchair has wheels fixed to an axis under the seat. Thank you. Awesome, why is it twenty dollars This is a copy for these audiobooks. Oh, this is for a copy of these audiobooks? Thank you, thank you. A chair. There's a chair. Um... This is a YouTube video? You gotta stop sending YouTube videos. What the hell is this? What did you just send me? This is Tenma Stream! Why did you send me Tenma Stream? I don't think with the 223, the, this entire stream was extremely cursed so far. Please consider purging it with fire. Gonna take a while to get rid of the psych damage. Thanks for the stream, no Pippa. Talk about everything for the twenty dollars. Thank you for another amazing stream, Peppa. Thank you guys for submitting stuff. Uh, this is from Nepchi. I Pippa order chat to get a PS2 emulator so they can play Tales of the Abyss. Also, Luke von Faber has the greatest character arc. Okay, Paulo Bendetti. Thank you for the two dollars, Pippa. Metal karaoke after the stream. Metal karaoke. Okay, this one's gross. This is from Goobs. I'm, go I'm, I'm gonna delay for as long as possible with, with reading the super chats. <sighs> CS in front doors. I would unironically watch an audiobook of the Unabomber Manifesto. Well, typically you listen to those. Typically you listen to audiobooks. Alright. Super chat list is short tonight, by the way. Alright. No, no! I'm gonna be Uh. Aiden Smith, for those. I have invested over 4,000 into model trains over the past two years. What model should I get next? What model of train should you get next? I don't know. I don't know a lot of names of trains. Um... It's not like a typical train, but do they make like a... Do they make the train from Snowpiercer? Can you get like a model of the Snowpiercer train? That'd be sick. I'd like a I'd like a model of that train. Um. What was I? The dynamic doodle thing over the four ten. I'm sorry I cheat on you with the lemon harlot when you're not around, just like Colrus. That's fucked up. Aiden Smith thing over the five dollars. Oh, I read that. I don't know. I don't know. Aiden Smith thing over the two dollars. I can make one. Maybe you should make one. Maybe you should make the train from Snowpiercer. Or, um... Maybe like... Maybe like a... I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll get back on you. The train from Snowpiercer? The Snowpiercer? Well, yes. Yes. The Snowpiercer. Oh. Even the music is mocking me. Fuck off. Okay. Um... There's a Thomas Kincaid painting that comes to mind. I don't know... I don't know what kind of train was in the... was in the painting. But I remember the painting and it was so beautiful. Maybe I'll post it on Twitter and have you guys identify it. Hi, darling, friend Dollars. Is Snowpiercer the one where Captain America eats a baby? What? What? 
You mean Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Part 2? Yeah. Okay, here's here's a cursed. All right. Imagine the smell of Pippa's venomous braps, though. She'd naturally smell musky and wild thanks to her half-rabbit side giving her a distinct body odor in the first place. On top of that, her lack of showers and unkept environment would cause her to sweat her sweat to kick her body, making an unimaginable smell. Imagine having Pippa plant her sweaty ass on your face after a full day's worth of stifling work and slowly releasing a gas cloud of death directly into your olfactory system. Her wild bunny smell combining with the disgusting mixture of her eating habits in her stomach. That was terrible, thank you, Anon. Or sorry, Goobs. Thank you, Goobs. Um, sure, I'll read this one. It's very, very short. Mr. Pringles lost his hair and that hopeful spark in his eyes. I feel you, Mr. Pringles. Is that his name? Thank you, Kira, for the submission. He has cancer? Yeah, I think Mr. Pringles is dying of cancer and that's a fake mustache. Ah, uh, This is another Google Talk. Oh uh, hell no! This is 22 pages! This is 22 pages! Okay, I'm gonna read like... A tiny bit of it. This is from... This isn't mine. Okay. Expect the unexpected from our buying Jun Jawulia. Summary. After a long journey, Wheeljack finds himself returning back to Earth while some with some special cargo. He remembers what had happened, but Bulkhead does not. Notes. This is something for a friend on DeviantArt. I hope you all like it. It starts out sucky. I apologize. I'm not 100% awake when I write these. All my best ideas have to come at 3 a.m. Enjoy, everyone! Chapter 1. Prologue. He knew something was wrong. He knew from the moment he returned to this rock called Earth. He knew his stay with Bulkhead wasn't worth it. But it was too late now. Just a few months ago, Wheeljack had come to this planet for the first time. His ship, damaged from a crash landing, had been under repair. He stayed with the Autobots for a few days while he fixed it. Though things didn't work out the way he expected, he and Bulkhead got a little carried away during his visit. Fragging after a small party and a lot of high grade. He wasn't paying... Oh, he was paying the price now. Jackie! Bulkhead said with excitement as he approached his friend. The poor guy didn't remember what had happened at the end of the... N had happened the night of the party. Whoa, what happened to you? It didn't take much to see it. The little glowing bulge that Will Jack called his abdomen. It wasn't huge, but it also wasn't small. Actually, it was quite big. I don't know. Why don't you ask the high grade? Jackie sarcastically replied, taking a few wobbly steps closer to Bulkhead. The small wrecker had figured out he was sparkled. Fuck. The small wrecker had figured out he was sparked about a month after leaving the base. He would often feel nauseous and just want to be lazy all day. He also noticed how his moods would rapidly change and he never felt satisfied. Of course, he didn't take it well, which of course was one of the reasons he desired to get rid of it. He didn't want sparklings anyway. And they were in the middle of a war! It would t <laughs> it would take a miracle for this child to grow without having something wrong during or after birth. That's what led him up to this current situation. The, the, <laughs> the bigger bot wasn't really sure what to do. He hadn't dealt with an issue like this before. It was strange, seeing his best friend sparked by his very spark. Let's get you back to base. Ratchet should probably make some... <laughs> Ratchet should probably make sure everything's okay, he offered. Though everything that came out of his mouth sounded like a question. Wheeljack didn't dare try to argue his way out of this. He knew if there was any chance that he couldn't potentially get rid of the sparkling, the doc would be the one to go. Two. However, something in him said this was wrong. It's... It said termination wasn't an option he should consider anymore. This was a life growing inside him. Not just any life. His life. His creation. Why should he give it up?
This is 22 pages. I'm not reading all that. What the fuck? What, okay. Yeah, it's Transformers Mpreg. Thank you. Thank you for that. Alright, can I get the Miss Super Chat list? We're gonna call it there. We're gonna... Oh, and, and the next one was the Trump indictment. Dot PDF. Okay. Let's get the... Let's get the Miss Super Chat list going. Jesus Christ. No, thank you for that. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Wait, read it. <laughs> oh, God. How many... This is 49 pages. And the font is really small. <laughs> I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I think this would make a really funny shitpost. I think it would be really fun to just confuse everybody. I think it'd be really fun... ...to just create absolute chaos... ...and do readings of everything... ...from the Communist Manifesto... ...to the Unabomber's Manifesto. You know? But I think my boss would have a stroke. All right. Let's see the super chat list. Diversity is strength. Diversity is confusion. Manifesto Mondays. <laughs> you went into a psych ward. All right. That'd be boring, to be honest. Very predictable. It's about the commitment to the shit post, right? Because it's one thing to like say you'll do it, and uh, and to like joke about it and stuff, right? But imagine you go to, like, a VTuber's channel, and they just have all that shit lined up. And it's, like, full readings. I just think it would be beautiful. Best badness, thank you for the five dollars. You want to know how sad I am? When I was a kid, I had a pet cactus. Magdalene's Rex, thank you for the two dollars. Easy, make homemade cookies. Win-win. Uh, Skate Geek, thank you for the... Two dollars. Mmm, M&M Chips Ahoy is the only answer. Oh, those are good. Junie, thank you for the tenors. You didn't take your schizo meds today, right? RJKY, thank you for the ten dollars. Cactusy. Copacetic, thank you for the ten dollars. Chewy is god tier. Rabbit, thank you for the forty dollar reduce. Hey Pippa, today is my birthday. Instead of getting presents, I'm giving you presents. Thanks for all the great content and for being the base mold you have it. Thank you, thank you! Happy birthday, Rabbit! Happy, happy birthday! It's an anything for the tenors. Shout out to my boyfriends and my best friend, Tem. Dive bomb dom, thank you for the hundred dollar reduce. Oh, um, this is I think this is the one I missed. I'm sorry, thank you, thank you for the hundred dollar reduce. Hey Pippa, this is my first time sending a super chat. Just wanted to tell you thanks. I've been wa watching you since postal. You've given me inspiration to try VTubing myself, and it's so fun. Thanks so much for all the entertaining streams and content. You rock, Pippa. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Um. Uh, no. Okay. Uh... I hope you enjoy VTubing. Your first accent in your Gundam Seed? The entry for many girls in the Gundam? Uh, not the ATF thing or the two dollars. I just got home from work. What the heck did I miss? Don't worry about it. Bingo, bingo, tango, bingo. Thank you for the two dollars. Uh, I'd say Brap Bros get the gas, but they're into that. Professor Keening from Five Dollars, how about instead of seeing pits at the next sub milestone, how about we see what your dad sent you last stream instead? Oh my god, Blizzard Insurance, thank you for two dollars. That one was from me. Thanks, Pippa. Ran something with a twenty dollar deuce from one Tails fan to another. I'm I'm not a Tails fan, I'm sorry. You've been scammed. Uh, internet Basil thank you for five dollars. Pippa, my friend needs a relational database in the cloud, but told me no by IT. What should they do to resolve this? Murder? I don't know. Pierce the heaven thing with the five gippy bees. Cult of personality thing with the five dollars. I was gonna submit the lyrics to Notorious B.I.G. song Big Booty Hose, but that would absolutely result in a T.O.S. violation. Infernal Saxon thing with two dollars. Did anyone send her Project Wingman? Dead Rod Stitches thing with the five dollars. Any other podcast you're planning on going on, Pippa? Who's right? Could be interesting. Uh, I'm not planning on going on any podcast. Uh, Sensor Duck thing with the eight thirty one. I just want to play a game with fighter jets, Japan. Bernadette and the other thing of the $5. All call signs, check in. My Leo CD, thing of the $2. This sounds like the script for a Maxor video. 
But Anna kept holding on five dollars. Don't know what any of that meant, but I think I hate Belkins now. Bahamut, thank you for the two dollars. There is no bong stick big enough. Eddie Lombardo, thank you for the two dollars. What a great stream. So proud of you. My little lady, thank you for the two dollars. Hi, Clippers. Pedro G, thank you for the twenty dollar reduce. What the absolute fuck? This shift in content is wild. Skin Kaji, thank you for the five dollars. Don't listen to the edge lords. Pepper go light mode and make them burn. Drag B, thank you for the two dollars. We need Project Wingman more reading posts now. Mahomet, thank you for the five dollars. Great schizo stream tonight, Pepper. Also, it's my birthday today. Happy birthday! Anything with that? Two dollars? Please say, do it again, General V kit. V. V. I kit. Do it again! Do it again, General V. I kiss. Where, where, where was I in the thing? Jail thing with the five dollars? Alright, Pippa, it's all set up now, but you need to get dressed as the M's you are, chat. Metal is fought. Our metal is trash thing with the dollars. After the travesty you read, you deserve this. Agent hey, John Will, thank you for the two dollars. Please don't lump us in with that degeneracy. Oddball the Righteous, thank you for five dollars. Pippa confirmed, axe murderer, screams in corner. Uh, Julian, thank you for the two dollars. That traumatized you like the dying cat did me. Copperhead Snake, thank you for five dollars. Jin the Goblin, thank you for five dollars. Dear Sweet Baby Jesus Why? Silver Dogs, thank you for the five dollars. Hi Pippa, your loved ones will keep you going through uncertainty and help you find your way. Believe in yourself or others, whichever is greater. Agent John Will, thank you for the two dollars. Can I be killed now? I won't spy anymore. Nope. You're stuck here. Dan Tran, thank you for the dollars. Cease! Or maybe... Cease! Dog, thank you for the five dollars. So glad you're reading our future together. Tony Stark, thank you for the dollars. Some people need a psych ward. The one from Shock. Agent John Glow, thank you for the two dollars. I'll tell you everything. Just kill me. Mr. Yura, thank you for the two dollars. The emergency shuttle has been called. Hashwag, thank you for the ten dollars. Base Coca-Cola Gremlin Noises. Alex Hale, thank you for the $2. If Pakora can barely pass VA class, so can Pippa! I think VA class is like... The, 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 the Japanese standards for voice acting are intense. They're like... Have you guys ever seen those, those videos where they go and they, um... Quote-unquote, like, expose Japanese voice actor culture? It's so different. I wish we had something like that in America. It's so... It's, it's kind of... Like, imagine. Imagine they were held to the same standards. Wouldn't that be cool? You haven't? You gotta, you gotta look it up sometime. He and Dub might be bearable, yeah. I haven't, but heard stories. That, but with Hollywood? Hollywood's a lost cause. They're just gonna keep slapping, like, big-name actors on there. To voice act. Dan Tran, thank you for I don't like this new director's cut. How about the righteous thing with the five dollars? No, make it stop! Ah! Drew D, thing with the two dollars. Now this is VTubing. Airline food thing with the two dollars. Board's emergency shuttle. Gordo Gamer thing with five dollars. Sideways thing with the two dollars. This is just... She's just waiting for that slack notif. Baxter, thing with the five dollars. How dare you talk about her like that? CS, thing with the two dollars. Yamate, Tangachan. Julian, thing with the five dollars. This reminds me of my favorite uncles had to watch... Wait. This reminded me one of my favorite uncles had to watch as his wife died. It was a decision to pull the plug because at the end she was brain dead. Well, she was basically already dead then, before that, so. Aiden Smith, thank you for the two dollars. It's a Tenga. How did she get cancer? She's synthetic. Internal Bazafil, thank you for the five dollars. Pippa, my friend needs a oh, I read that. Uh ran something over the I I think I think I'm caught up. Yeah, I'm caught up. Dun 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 dun! Uh, Petzl Saucer, thank you for the two dollars. Enjoy the stream. Mobius one, Fox one, Fox one. No, you can cut up. Pip up my ass to the vegetable. Let's go. Let's go. Still hurts. Yeah, I bet that hurts. I'm sorry. This, this, this fucked up. But at least your uncle's alive. Right? Right? Oh, God. I'm very sad. Stop being sad. Stop being sad. Listen, do you want it to be you? Do you want to be the one? Do you want to be the vegetable? Fuck you. How did classic Chips Ahoy win the thing? Chewy was in the lead. This is so rigged. You guys are stupid. You guys are so stupid. Let's check the schedule. See who's liable. Um. Um. Don't we me? 
It's been a while since we raided Whammy, right? She's playing Roblox. Bow, 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 bow. Bow, 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 bow. Recount. Yeah, we need a recount. Whammy. Dun, 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 dun. Um, Liquid, thank you for the $5 reduce. Hey, Pippa, can you say? I am the danger in your best Walter White impression. I am the danger. Something like that. Oh, wait, how... I am the danger. But how how does he do it? How does it? I can't I can't make my voice that low. I'm sorry. He's like I am the danger. Sounds so corny. I don't know. A for effort. Thank you. <laughs> Terrible, Walter. <laughs> okay. Okay. I am the one who knocks. <laughs> That's close enough. Alright, thank you guys so much for stopping by. My name's Pipkin Peppa, and I will see you tomorrow. Hell yeah! Butter cream.